Hey guys, Jerry Games here again. This is going to be a redo of my What If Deku Master 1 for All series, as I think I could have taken a better route with it. Now, I'm sorry if I talk fast, and this What If is just... For some reason, all day I've been just really excited and full of energy, so... Talk fast, it's just that's just my energy peaking for no reason. So, yeah. But um, before I start, I have a fan on, because it's hot as hell in my room. Plus, I sprayed air conditioner around. Not air conditioner, just... Air freshener. I don't know I said air conditioner. I sprayed air freshener around this fan spreading it. I also have my window open because hot. But if someone drives out a loud music, you can understand why. Or if I end the music because it's too. Not in the music. If I end the video because it's too loud, most likely because most it's copyrighted music. Or might have been. But uh, yeah. Now, yeah, check this. Let's put it off now. So, Deku would have cleared the breach. Not the breach. The bleat. The beach. He would have cleared the beach in around nine months. I might still give Midoriya nine months. Not nine months. Uh, he, would give him, he, he would tell Midoriya he has one month to train, but one for all is he gives Midoriya a piece of his hair. Midoriya eats that piece of his hair, and then the next day Midoriya comes back and does a one for all trait smash the first time. All might tells him to tells him to direct it towards the ocean, which Midoriya does, but his arm breaks. <coughs> <coughs> his arm broke. All my head is like, you know, don't run, to the, don't run to your mom, don't run to the hospital. I'll be right back. He brings Midoriya, brings recovery to Midoriya, and she heals him. Because of how bad his break was in his arm, she volunteers to be his, I guess, in, not instructor, but their, their medic. Until so Midoriya can get decent control of one for all. Now, for around a week, Midoriya would break his bones repeatedly, but recovery girl doesn't get tired of it. She knows that Midoriya's a kid, and All Might is trying, is trying his best to assist him. Recovery girl then brings up that all Might's strength is all over his body, but it's more convenient for his arms. So he tells Midoriya that use a stronger limb, like, like your legs, to turn one for all into. <clears throat> but Midoriya still wants to be like All Might, but he's able to find a way in Curvy Girl's word, or find not a loophole, but more like a more like inspiration, kind of. Also, going to have a loophole in, his, in her words. Where he starts trailing one for all throughout his body, as you see, his body about to still up. It's just, I think, think he's going to break his whole body doing this. But then Midoriya like, outputs it like a burst. But that burst and turns into electricity, shooting, not shooting, but channeling on his body. And that's how Midoriya would unlock full cowling. He unlocks it in one week. That's a recovery girl's words. She didn't want to keep killing him, but she's okay with, with it because he's a kid, and she can actually tell that All Might is trying his best to make sure Midoriya doesn't keep breaking bones. <coughs> There's three weeks left to training, so Midoriya would, would, do, would do these three weeks of training with, with All Might. And by the end of the week, three weeks, Midoriya has some of scratches and, and stuff on his body, but it's not all of them leave scars. But there's one scar in his body that Recovery Girl could not fully heal. That was because All Might punched Midori in the stomach as hard as he could. Now, I'm not using the to Smash, but like, look, not as hard as he can, but pretty damn hard. Like, better than a Detroit Smash or anything, but on the scale of the United States Smash. Midori coughed up into blood, almost dying. Midori coughed up into blood, almost dying. But Recovery Girl was able, was able to save Midori's life, and actually almost threatened to tell to tell Nezu and, and higher up heroes about what All Might just did if he did that ever again to a student. Because Midori doesn't know All Might's going to be a teacher. Midori even announced it on live TV because Recovery Girl told All Might that it might take Midori a, a week or two or maybe even more to go to get to UA. Get into UA officially. If he does pass the, the exam, that that being. Also, due to Recovery Girl being there, she makes Midori a study a lot. So Recovery Girl, between Recovery Girl and All Might, he gets a very big balance of well, proper studying and proper, proper proper physical training. Recovery Girl also insisted that All Might and Midori take martial art classes. So, so... Midori's training was like one like this. So, Sunday and Monday and Tuesday, those are Midori's days of physical training with All Might from around 7 a.m. where Inko went to work to around an hour before she got off. So, between like 7 a.m. to to 5 p.m. That's how, that's how much Midori trained. <coughs> and he barely even stopped unless it was time for breakfast or lunch. Sometimes even dinner, but yeah. He did that for, for you for a week or two, three, or three weeks in total actually. And then he he barely had school and he like, he had barely had school to, he had barely had, he barely had school again so that didn't, that didn't really matter. And then and he would also so Monday so Sunday Monday and Tuesday were physical training. Wednesday and Thursday that was where he spent a little bit of time with with Inko during during the week. He even went to work went to work with her sometimes to learn how how she does her job because it'd be very very very, very beneficial in the words of a Kirby girl. But he also would spend some time studying if he didn't go to work with Inko. 
And then for the rest of the week, would be would be we'd get some knowledge training, and even he go he went even went to like just different hospitals with recovery girl. So Nori learned a little bit of medical expertise from that. Well, he's not like a, a professional doctor, but he did learn a lot about about like medicine and and how to do, apply bandages. And he even got proper training or secret training from recovery girl on how to fix his own wounds, or at least fix them up properly so he can get to a hospital in time. We even learned how to fix stab wounds or how to treat proper stab wounds and and bullet wounds just in case so we can get someone to the hospital no we can't cure them fully or fix them up properly or fix them up all the way but he's able to like just just may be able to keep someone alive long enough to get them to a hospital but first week at ua not first week but first day at for training but over here for the written exam he scores number one his intelligence is through the roof but let me pause it quick so let's just say Midori guy got number one or two which was a little shocking to everyone since well, he didn't look, look too smart, because so far, Midori was just a very big muscle head to everyone else, because he was a little bit bigger, because Recovery Girl had him eating, eating a certain diet, and All Might had him working out this much all day. And even Inko had noticed this, but he had one, one, specific, one specific scar from her, which is the one, the fist imprint on his gut, and that's not that's still not fully healed. If Midori does push his body hard enough, he will, he will start throwing up blood. But he's very close to being fully healed. But if he does start pushing himself too hard, that's when his body will just revert back to like the first time he got beaten up by All Might. But, yeah, back to this. So, Midoriya number one for the written test, and Ida's opinion about Midoriya went wrong. As Midoriya, because his, mutter, his mutter, muttering problem ended once he started going to, going to work with Inko and Recovery Girl. Because they're like, you know, you can't mutter, mutter all the time here, and you get in trouble, and you get me in trouble. So Midoriya had to get rid of that habit, or do it internally. So when he did it internally, he was able to think faster, and he learned the habit of thinking on his feet, and he got good at it. But now for the, for the like the robots. Everyone has high hopes, has high hopes from Midoriya when the recovery girl in All Might, but Ida and Ochako are curious to see what he see what he'll do because Uraka is still saving Midoriya when he, at the first like the entrance. But yeah, but um, um eventually, um, until it started, Midoriya by the way, like his appearance is more like just. A little bit taller, like an inch or two taller than Bakugo. But also, right now he's wearing like, just like a green, like a green or light blue shirt. A little bit of blue, we'll say like a sea green shirt. And then it's just sleeveless with shorts and high tops. While Midori proceeded to run through, kicking the first zero pointer away. And Midori can use 8% of one for all for cowling. He's able to beat Ida's speed, kicking the zero pointer, not zero pointer, three pointer right in the head, destroying it immediately. And Ida has to admire how strong Midoriya is. But Midoriya. Midori considered, well, considered, like, just, you know, like, saving people instead, which Midori actually did, did really good, because so far Midori has a lot of combat training, which he knows he'll do really good at, so Midori got around, like, 30 points in total, and after that, he decided they want to start helping people. So, once he was finished beating up all those zero pointers, not zero pointers, three, three, two, one pointers, he began saving other people. The first person, first person he saved was Aoyama, as once he grabbed Aoyama from the basement three pointer, he punched a hole right through it, destroying it. And he proceeded to save a lot of people. He even saved Chaka at one point. And eventually, we have, like, once you have Chaka, he's like, alright, now we're even. He smiled as a Chaka. Bumidori was very handsome. He happened to be in the same arena as Ibarra and, um, Kirishima. And Ibarra could tell, like, you know, Ibarra was actually just shocked that Midori was this strong, because he's, do he's do dominating everything. Midori saved enough people to the point where he got 100 rescue points, which is already having him above everyone else. But he has 30 regular points. Well, not, he saved Ayama, so 33 points. He saved Ayama and if he did zero point at the same time, so that's that's 33 additional points for your hero points. So Midori's at 133 points, and for another five minutes, he continues saving people and destroying point, destroying other like three, three, two, one pointers, like you'd say. But eventually, Midori, by the time he's walking away from, from everyone, like he's evacuating everyone, he didn't see Ochaka run by. He immediately ran around the whole arena looking for her. And eventually he does see Araka about to be crushed by some rubble as it was falling from a really high point. Midoriya caught it, cut it, all, cut it all with one hand, and he was able, like, he was able to hold up some of it. I mean, he flicked the air charge again with a zero pointer and hit it right, like, I guess, in the knee joint, which made it fall down. But he threw the rubble right at its head, pushing it back a bit. He caught, he got, well, not caught, he grabbed Araka and ran off as fast as he can. And Ida was just like, oh, this way, this way, this way, six way. Ida, Ida looked at Midoriya as Midoriya thanked him. And when they escaped, Midoriya. Midori's like, just, like, so I'm jump down in front of him, so everyone's shocked. I'm gonna announce, and Midoriya had passed with a score of 245. Midori saved that many people, and most of the points, well, half of it are your rescue points, the other half are zero pointers. Not zero pointers, just one, two, and three pointers. 
And right now, so Midoriya had higher had more points than him, but barely got it. Now Midoriya holds a new UA record. Now, a lot of kids, in, like, well, everyone, Midoriya saved at least everyone there one time. So, as the gates opened, everyone picked up Midoriya started throwing in the air, cheering for him. Bakugo had heard the cheering saying, saying, Izuku, Izuku, Izuku. And Inko had arrived just to pick up Midoriya because it had ended by now, and she heard everyone yelling his name. She thought, she, thought, she thought he was in trouble, so she looked, seeing everyone cheering for him. And Bakugo was like, how the hell is that little bastard better than me getting all those cheers? He even asked one of the people who didn't, like, he wasn't cheering for Midoriya, like, like, uh, this person happened to be Kirishima, like, you know, how did he get that many points and all that? And Kirishima was like, he defeated a zero pointer, beat all my record, and saved all of us. He deserves this. Kirishima then joined in, sharing from, sharing from Midoriya. Ibar even not joining at one point. But, yeah. Now, we're gonna go, I'm gonna fast forward around three days, because everyone knows All Might is a UA teacher. He didn't have to spend time preparing all, all the recordings for it. But once he does, once Midori, Midori gets, his, gets his letter, he if he would think, well, he'd just be very thankful that he, that he got in the UA, and everyone knew he got in the UA, because I never won on the, on the intelligence score, or just written exam, and everything. Midori walked into class, he doesn't really wear like the UA uniform, the UA uniform, same way he does in Canyon. So Midori, like he said, a mental change a bit, well, a little bit of a mental change, and a little bit bigger of a, of a physical change. So... Midoriya would basically just be wearing the blazer of the UA uniform, but doesn't wear a button, doesn't wear him buttoned up, and he has a buttoned up shirt, like, just buttoned down a little bit more as well. He has his tie on, too. So he, his appearance is very similar to Johnny Cage. That's the best way to say it, but, but he's actually taking pride in his appearance, too. Well, Johnny Cage does, he's too prideful. But Midoriya's, like, a very, very, like, just humble person, so. But he's not as, like, nervous as in canon. But, like, he's more kind of like a Kai from Tokyo Avengers, like, like, everyone knows he's scared of girls, but he doesn't show it. And the same way Midori, like, oh, if a girl talks to him, he turns his head immediately and he says, Yep, how are you doing? And he turns bright red. Everyone knows, like, he has a confident tone, but everyone can tell he's scared. <laughs> yeah, so Midori just still talking about Ochako as he immediately just froze and turned bright red as he saw his straight face, saying, Yes, thank you, please let go. So let go, seeing his face, and immediately laughed a bit. Like, she didn't, she didn't say that, she said, Oh my god, that's cute. She sits in her seat, and all the girls in UA, not in UA, but in 1A, kind of thought of Midori as very attractive. Midori sat in the seat, and Azawa was like, all right, go, go downstairs, and we'll go to the locker room, get dressed. And Midori, like, he was hesitant to take his shirt off. Everyone's like, you know, what, what, you have less scars on your arm, what, your body's too scarred up? Midori says, no, just embarrassed of a certain scar. And everyone actually promised to turn around. As they turn around, Midori took off his shirt, and immediately put on his uniform as fast as he could. As fast as he could. He didn't want anyone to see the, all my, the fist imprint all my, all my left on him, because that would ruin all Might's reputation, and All Might didn't mean to do that to him. Even All Might feels very bad about it to this day, to this day, so, yeah. So it's only Midoriya, a recovery girl, and All Might didn't know about the scar. But, yeah. Now once Midoriya has his outfit on, everyone kind of notices that Midoriya has a habit of wearing, like, shirt, like, his shirts and things that, like, just not zip down, but, like, guess unbuttoned or zip down, actually. Midoriya just like that habit. He like, he likes the habit because he saw it on TV, and then he kind of started copying it because he thought it looked cool. But, as I tell him to zip it up, Midoriya does, and that kind of ruined the habit. So, Midori, Midori he goes back in class earlier, later, he puts, puts the buttons back up in his shirt. But, um, like this. So, Midori at number one, he just go, he goes for the for ball throw first. Midori will channel, I actually channel 10%, or actually 11%. 11% is his limit. He channels up, channels 11% into his arm and throws it as far as he can. And he gets a little bit higher than the actual score in canon, so hits around, so he just gets the highest score, for this, this to say that. So he's the highest score. And he has a high score, he got number one. And then forever the test, Midoriya will place between between number one and three. So by the end of the whole exam, Midoriya gonna go, go, go put in number two. As if he didn't place number number one or two, it was either Shoto or Shoto or Momo that were that were ahead of him. But Midoriya was able to beat Momo in the last test, which allowed him to get number to, to, to get number two. And him and Momo were actually kind of challenging each other at that point. By the time it ended, Momo, Momo, Momo would just laugh, saying, like, all right, well, you win. Midori got laughed, saying it was fun, it was fun challenging her. As Midori had bad for Momo, and everyone was confused on why he wasn't a recommended student. As I only know about, about one for all, and Midori was, had heard by everybody, no one thought he was a recommended student. And, well, everyone kind of say everyone knows there's four recommended students, but they don't know who the other, other two are, and they think one of them is Midoriya. 
But as I said, no, he's not a recommended student. I can't, I can't confirm that. But this, well, this some well, during the ten months, he actually found found some way to actually get proper training on his quirk so it doesn't hurt his body. As as I will hear about Midori breaking a lot of bones. So whatever I heard that says, yeah, that's it. I just got proper training for my quirk. And uh, Bakugo trying to ruin it says, oh yeah, how do you do that? That one says, oh, well, like a lot of heroes, he probably 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 broke his limits. He started training his quirk quirk as best as he could. Midori not saying, yeah, I clean Dagobah Beach. And I was like, oh yeah, we just go there and it's clean now. But I'm um, back to this. So I'm thinking of the class, Midori, Midori buttons up his shirt again, but doesn't button up the blazer. And his sleeves are rolled up. They go through class, as Midori's going through it pretty well. Like I said, Midori, Midori's mumbling habit, or I guess, I guess just a just talkative habit, that's gone now. It's all, it's all internally, or just doesn't, or just doesn't do it. Or you just like like dumbs it down to a few words that everyone could 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 understand. Maybe like be one like one or two one or two sentences, sentences, but not as much as everyone else does. Not as everyone else, but as much as he originally originally does. So back to this. Now Midoriya. Next day, they have to do at least here's versus villains test. But Midoriya's costume is a little bit different. Yes, it's still green, and, and just to take pay homage to Recovery Girl, some of this. Like, it's more like just a jacket, not like a, not like just a shirt or a hoodie. It's just a jacket that he keeps open at all times. Some of it's, like, it's like a mixture of green and white. But then he has a kind of a, a skin tight, like a like skin tight long sleeve shirt under that. That is, as a mixture of green, not green. So just red with like the hints of hints of green lines on it. And uh, not everyone, but all I can tell that's a homage to him and Recovery Girl, but in Midori's own style. Midori, because he moves so fast, does have goggles, which is also similar to Recovery Girl's. I guess, I guess the goggles or glasses is she pretty sure she has? Let me check. Yeah, so Recovery Girl's like, I guess the uh, goggles on her face. There is some similar goggles, but they're just, they're just kind of like straps like Aizawa's. But that's just his version of the homage, plus he moves, he moves really fast. So that's the best way to shield his eyes. So yeah, the Midoriya pant, Midoriya's pants are the same, the same as they were in Canon, or this, at least the Gamma suit version. And it's the same kind of gloves. Now back to this. And Midori also has like a lot of just certain drugs that he that would that, like Recovery Girl would give him if he was if he was just too injured. Though so these drugs kind of amp up, amp up your energy, or I don't think I can like, call them drugs, pharmaceuticals. They amp, they amp up Midori's strength, well, not strength. They amp, they amp up his energy and just his they, they make him make him think he has no limits. Like just amp up his his whole emotional system. Just he's still in control of it. Doesn't feel high or drunk, but he's he's set. And it lasts around five ten minutes, so it should give Midori enough time to do the job or escape. But back to being normal. So everyone kind of like kind of likes Midori's costume, thinking that's very cool. And Midori does not, have, does not have a cape because no capes in the mode. But um, yeah, he just has that jacket that hangs that flows in the wind. But Midori's team is still Ochako, and his enemy his enemies are Bakugo and Ida. Bakugo had heard Midori beating all my records, so he's actually being a lot more cautious. But Midori think, thinking fast on his feet, would then say to Ochako, he has a plan. So Midori states, if he moves fast enough, he can probably run up on the roof to the final, to find the floor. Not the roof, but like run on the walls, find the, find, find the proper floor the bomb is on. And when he does that, he can probably, probably have him himself hang on the ledge with Ochako on his back. And if he, chose, if he chooses to, he can probably just push in the window, not without shattering it, to catch him off guard. Or you can at least push it in by flinging at Ida or something. If he does that, then you should be able to push Ochako or throw her in, and he will distract Bakugo and Ida, well, Ida while she does that. Ochako would nod, I think that's a good plan, but she can just float them up if, if he wants to. As if he does run, it might, might, might alert them. So Midori, Midori nods as Ochako makes them both float, but he just kind of like, just like lightly jumps against jumps up, up the walls holding her. Then once he gets to the ledge, she just she doesn't like cancel it out, but she makes it so they stay in place. Midori looks into the window. And he's able to find to see Ida moving every object. But then Midoriya just places his hand in the window as he pushes it as hard as he can, using a little bit one for all, and pushes off, it, off its hinges. Chaka like, didn't make any noise. Well, he didn't push it out of frame, I guess. Chaka made a float so it didn't hit the ground. Midoriya then caught it, throwing it at Ida. Or just, well, Chaka then instantly just turned off, like, the, just the gravity. And he threw it at Ida. Or she didn't know Bakugo. Bakugo had to block it immediately as he saw it. Once it was blocked, Midori threw Chaco right into the room. She rolled, and Midori just, just jumped in, and he elbowed Bakugo into a wall. Now him and Ida kind of just began like a battle of kicks, mainly. 
but the Ida's armor, armor began denting with Midoriya's force. Midoriya realized that, saying, oh, oh, you shouldn't have worn this armor. Midoriya then kicks, like, the tip of Ida's armor, like, the little pointy part, I guess, or just upward part of his helmet. And when he kicks it, that part dents in, and it hit Ida right in the forehead, which stunned Ida. Ida's, Ida was knocked to the ground as Baku would go to wiggle blow Midoriya. Then Baku saw him so Chaka. And Chaka touched the bomb, and all my announces, Hero Team wins. Midoriya laughs, saying, All right. Baku said, Damn it. You were, you were the distraction, not her. Midoriya nods, saying, Yep. And Midoriya's, Midoriya's voted MVP because his plan worked. But they didn't say, You know, it's because you dented Ida's armor so much. If you kept hitting those spots, you might have actually started hurting Ida's physical body. Well, he, he hurt Ida a bit, but if he kept like, hitting the spots where he dented, he would have broken Ida, Ida's bones, probably. So Midori is giving, like, like, just like he, he's, he's reprimanded for that, but he's still given the MVP position. So yeah, now, um, next day, they choose class rep. Midori's voted class rep because, well, what, like, well, just Kirishima gave Midori a vote because, let me pause real quick, actually, and see something on my window. Two scrolls were fighting up a tree. <laughs> They're coming and fighting, it was funny. But, um, but, let me pause one more time, sorry. Okay, so... Next day, she's in class rep. Kishima actually votes, she votes, votes Midoriya as, like, you know, I owe, I, owe, I, owe, I owe him my life. Ida votes, votes Midoriya. Chaco votes, votes Midoriya. A good percentage of class 1A votes for Midoriya. So Midoriya ends up with around 8 votes. Which results in Midoriya winning. But, uh, well, Chaco actually get, does get some votes as well. And Ida does, does too, shockingly. Makuyo gets one vote, which is himself. And, yeah. There's me class rep, and then Momo's voted is voted vice rep. Now during lunch, the press though still like triggered the alarm gates, or the gates, or the alarms in the gates, and Midori and both Ida both see this. Midori actually picked up Ida, running as fast as he could through the hallway. I'm not using one for all, of course, because he might push people away. But then Midori will use like a one for all, like a two percent one for all hop. He grabs onto the pipes and he tells Ida to climb up his body to get up there. Ida does so as Midori supports Ida, making sure she doesn't fall, and Ida announces that announces it's just the press. With this, Midori she resigns in, as class rep and announces it to Ida, which makes Momo say, you know, if you're not if you're not class rep, I'm not qualified to be vice rep. And she passed that title to Midoriya. This is Midori starts thinking, saying, well, she'd have like a, like a treasury position for Momo, because she's she's really good at the, at this stuff. So so Momo's made a treasurer or or assistant to Midori and Ida. Go back to this. So, next day is USJ. Midori has two versions of his, his like of uh, his, his costume. He, he made he made the second version of it. The second version is more or less like his shirt is white with hints of green on it, and then the jacket is red with hints of green on it. His pants, his pants and shoes are the same, but his gloves are are then just black black with black with red or red and green marks on it, and then he has his goggles still. But the jacket on the second version has has a hood on it. And Midori's wearing the second version today. Only difference between his version and second version is Midori's version isn't fireproof. Basically only stab proof, that's it. Like it's really hard to it's really hard to cut through. If you try to, if you try to cut through it, basically the tip, of, the tip of the knife will, will poke Midori and just annoy him. Like if you basically like step on a thumbtack and it pokes your foot, that's kind of what it feels like. Like you have shoes on and you step on a thumbtack and it pokes your foot, like your slipper or something. That happened to me earlier today, so. Yeah, they let you want like break straight through my slipper and put and stab me in the foot. Oh, I, I, I tore, tore paper clip in half. All right, sorry about that. So, so now everyone's talking about Midori's quirk, and they think it's very similar to All Might's. Midori says, "No, his quirk might be similar to All Might's. No one knows because All Might's quirk isn't named." But he does say, you know, that if his quirk it was similar to All Might, then. He would have probably the same power because All Might doesn't hurt himself. Kishim says that too, and Midori's quirk also means lightning. But when Midori says, "Well, my quirk doesn't mean lightning, but it's because of me, it's because of me holding back a lot." Because Midori does, does everyone like his body does, well, doesn't hurt himself, but makes him freeze up if he does does go does use too much power. So he brings up, you know, if he does go all out, he'll hurt himself. So yeah. No, back to the back to like the whole getting to SJ. They, they get to the USJ, and Kirishima points out the villains. So Midori sees some of them cocking guns, and they're not gonna be guns or fake guns, some of them have gun quirks. So Midori immediately will rush towards the door, cooking as hard as he can, and he just rushes Krogiri immediately. 
Then you also the weakest members of the class to get out. So I'm fine. Just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so members of class twenty that leave. So those that Midoriya tells to leave are Aoyama, Mina, Ochako, Ojiro, Koda, Jiro. So so Aoyama, Mina, Ochako, Ojiro, Koda, Jiro, Toru, and Mineta. Those are the ones that are left. Suyu, Ida, Denki, Kirishima, Sato, Shoji, Seiro, Tokuyami, Todoroki, Bakugo, Midori, and Momo. Midori has plans for them all. So, so I, I, I was asking, you know, why isn't everyone else leaving? And Ida tells us, you know, Midori has, Midori has a plan. This is Midori thinking on his feet immediately. Midori thinks for about an insulated blanket. He tells Momo to you know, make at least like, like just a blanket that can hold off Denki's execution. He nods as Midori throws it around, De around not around Denki, around Kirishima, and around Sato, and then around Shoji, well, around Shoji, Sato, and Kirishima. He tells those two, no, not those two, those three, go all out with your quirks as much as you can and run charge, charge to the villains with Denki on your back. So Denki, Denki gets on, is on, is on their back as a blanket is put over them, and they rush forward as a kind of like a tank or a ram, pushing away all the villains, knock, even knocking some out. Once in the middle of the villains, Denki lets out an all-out, Denki lets out an all-out blast. And just knocks out a lot of the villains. Then Shoji, Shoji, Kirishima, and Sato will take a blanket off. Shoji will take care of Denki, and they begin beating up the rest of the villains. Then, once they're knocked out, he tells Sarah to take them up as much as he can and wrap their whole body, like heck, just basically feet to their neck, wrap, wrap, wrap them in tape. Sarah can do that. He tells Tokiyami to provide cover. He tells Shoto, you know, basically to make a barrier around. Basically, you just freeze up the door. Freeze it. Like, freeze the whole, freeze the door. If they need to get out, he'll punch it down. Except Bakugo, saying, me and you, me and you can take down the rest of the villains that are being taped up, aren't being taped up, taped up. Anthony tells Momo that provide cover, still provide cover for Aizawa and 13. So Aizawa and 13 begin attacking, attacking, um, attacking the Nomu and Kirishima, not Kirishima, attacking the Nomu, Shigaraki, and Krogiri. But he tells, tells Suyu and Ida that they are the best chance at defeating Kurogiri or knocking him away. And Momo makes a cannon as Midori just recommends them to make a giant make giant rubber cannonballs. Oshu does that means shooting them at the Nomu, at, at Shiraki and Kurogiri. And it's actually a very solid plan, to the point where basically no one no one can escape. Shoto freezes some villains if they're in the way of of, of Sarah and Tokiyami. But Midori and Baku actually have a really good teamwork as Midori knows how to work alongside Baku's fighting style. Initially, Baku can acknowledge that Midoriya is a very strong warrior. But then he hears, hears, hears Ida yell for help. Ida's, Ida's leg is about to be severely broken by the Nomu. Before, the, before Nomu's fist will land on Ida's knee, Midoriya will actually jump and tackle the Nomu and hold it down as he sees Aizawa's eye is bleeding pretty badly as Nomu punched like, Aizawa like, right in the face and some of his head in the ground. Well, not in, in the face, but in the back of his head, some of his, some of his head in the ground. And a piece of rubble hit Aizawa right in the eye, pretty, pretty and pretty badly. Shoji was Shoji is pretty tired right now. His, his fists are covered in blood from villains and, and his own, and he had ran out of energy. Sato and Denki are commissioned because they're quirks. Kirishima can't hold up his hold, hold up his stone much longer. Jin tells Todoroki to help those guys. Zero finished his job, and Tokami did as well. And Momo's fighting good fire, but the Nomu is taking it to, taking it right to the chest. But Ida, well, Suyu was punched into a wall by the Nomu, and once Midori is able to throw the Nomu into the water, like deep in the water. He sees Shiraki about to, about to kill Su, about to kill Suyu. I doubt they'll be able to hold off Shiraki as Midoriya then breaks Shiraki's leg by kicking him. Get back to this. So eventually, once Shigaraki, whose leg was broken, Kogu tries to teleport Midori through the portal, to the portal, and he does so. But they also, they also saw his will get knocked out by the Nomo again, and Midori tries to go help him. But then Shiraki will grab Midori's body, decaying him, trying to at least. With that, suddenly, Shiraki is kicked in, kicked in the ceiling by Midoriya, and so due to Shiraki being unconscious, his dig, Midoriya's dig, well, guess the decay of Midoriya's chest will cease. And then, Midoriya will destroy Taizawa, but suddenly he sees All Might next to him. Midoriya, just knowing he can do this now, Midoriya tries to as much with Detroit Smash as he could. His body develops a resilience to one for all, so, as it's sitting right now, Midoriya will do a 100% Smash with All Might hitting the Nomu right in the face, 
and they blow out, they blow up, they blow up basically its head, they blow it up. Midori's arm is broken, but not as badly. So, like, he can move it a bit until it comes into a fist, but the paint isn't as bad. And Midori, Midori points, points that out, it's only in test. If you can do that, at least evacuate, evacuate all your classmates. We does so, evacuating everyone, even Isaiah 113. When they're outside, he saw all his classmates ran off, and he sees heroes, ambulances, and police outside. Once everyone is out, Bakuyo and Todoroki got, Todoroki got themselves out, but everyone knows Midori had to carry. But there's aren't being, there's aren't being taken, taken care of, but a recovery girl, she didn't take a lot of energy out of her, which, which she didn't tell Midori yet, but Midori could already tell. So Midori then was like planning to tell all like this after, after the whole event is done. But then they see the Nomu punch through the ceiling, as like I said, recovery girl, I sure said this actually, recovery girl told Midori and all might take what take take out martial arts. All might take up wrestling or boxing. He, I don't know what you're trying to set it on, but let's say it's what he took up on like on boxing. So all might use a strong uppercut, saying no move through the ceiling, and he didn't he didn't use his mighty punches. Like he just uses his actual enhanced physical body to do that. Because all might skinny form is a little bit a little bit muscular, more muscular, and his eyes are like they're sunken in still, but you can actually see them a little bit more. So small might is a little more like a little more muscular, almost, almost becoming average. But do this small might being a little bit stronger. So to buff all might getting a lot of you know, small, small strength buff too. <sighs> but uh, yeah, so everyone's everyone's helped. I saw which has a pretty messed up eye and a very badly broken arm. Which cover girl healed immediately. The eye she didn't do much about because it's damaged, but yeah. Where the bone around it was. But everyone thanks Midoriya. And uh, the next day they go into class. And well Midoriya, well first Midori brought up to All Might that his arm being broken didn't take a, no, didn't take a lot of energy out of a recovery girl. So let's start brainstorming, brainstorming theories. Like, did any user have healing quirk? Have a healing quirk? Because that might be, that might, Midori might be awakening quirks one for all. That was a recovery girl's theory because she, she has more brains among them, I'd, I'd assume. But, uh, yeah. No, now all my old Google the quirks to all users think, no, 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 none of them had healing quirks. They have these quirks. They didn't go in depth on the, on the first through fourth user, but like the fifth user, sixth user, seventh user, eighth user, well, not, well five, six, and seven, and then he went and did all their quirks, but all my inventory are the, are the only quirk with quirkless users. Well, Mo, not Mo, Nana had a float quirk, that girl Bonjo had to test Black Whip, the fifth user, well, so far it's just float, smoke, and Black Whip. Those are the, quirk, those are the quirks we have right now. Inventory can't do either of those. So Midori announces his body is developing a resilience one for all, and maybe even coming like All Might. It doesn't he doesn't take damage from one for all. Once Midori says All Might so here's that you're like, alright then. Well, well the sports festival's coming up, so me and you'll be doing extra training with an old friend of mine. Referencing Gran Torino. And Midori has met has met Gran Torino once or twice, but Gran Torino didn't join in on training. He's joined Midori, All Might, and Curry Girl for lunch. So, so Midori and, and Gran Torino are, are acquainted. They're okay with each other. But uh, yeah, so. The, the Sports Festival is announced the next day, and Midoriya will do training for two weeks with All Might. And then Midoriya went from his limit being 8% all the way to, well, it wasn't his limit, but that was like the perfect percentage. If he used like anything above 8%, well, actually, the actual limit before his body starts taking damage is around 30%, but it's like 30% of like, like bruises, or bruises or like just, like just a lot of pain. And 50% is where his body will start in getting bruises, even sprains. Or dis dislocating limbs. And then if he goes anything above 80, his bones will start will start breaking. So yeah, but Midori is able to get his percentage all the way up from 8 to around 13. But if he did anything above like, anything below 30, his body just, just just tenses up and it's hard for him to move. But that only lasts around one to one or two minutes. But Midori is able to at least move a bit to take one take a pill. His body will kind of forget it has limits or amp up, amp up Midori's energy so much. He's able to he's able to, to run around, or at least doesn't doesn't feel the pain. Like it hurts a bit, but not as much as like anything above thirty percent does. So back to this. So the sports festival comes around. Amidori does have a few more scars, but only like two or three. They don't they don't like, like his hands. His arms look like look like how they do after the after the force incident. <clears throat> so first test the sports festival. Also by the way. When Midori and Baku were teaming up, Baku, Baku, Baku got then softened up toward, towards Midoriya. And Midori's surname is still Deku, but I, I'm, not, I'm not going over here names yet. Well, his surname might still be Deku. So, yeah. 
So, after this, Midoriya, well, after this, but Midoriya, um, so, the first, test the first festival, I guess, like, the, I guess the path you have to take. The director can already tell or think that show is probably going to freeze it, or Bakugo will let out a straight smoke screen to blind everyone. So, one of those two are possibilities, so Midoriya decides to have his own plan. As soon as, as, soon as, go, as soon as someone yells go, Midoriya readied up before they even said go. Midoriya, Midoriya was, already was already at 10%. But Midoriya ran around in front of everyone, punching the ground as hard as he can, making a big smoke screen. Big, making a big smoke screen. So Midoriya and Ida were the only ones ready to run forward. So with that, Midoriya and Ida were running. And Midoriya is kind of keeping pace with Ida to tease him. Ida already Ida knows that, and that, that pissed him off. So Ida just started using her simple burst as he can use it for a longer period of time. Ida began taking personal training up with Tensei and his parents. Because that was the best way for him to learn. Because he talked about Midoriya, and they had a, an immediate urge to do that. Just you know, strain as hard as you can. And Bakugo kind of chuckled, saying, Oh, you little bastard. As he shot, um, shot, shot, uh, shot through the smoke as, as uh, Todoroki froze everyone. But most of the class ran forward as, as fast as they could. With the zero, with the zero pointers, Midoriya just like, legit, like, like put his arms in front of them and ran through them like they were nothing. And eventually Midori does like pick up the whole zero pointer arm and he does, does it through everything up until the landmines. Midori started thinking on his feet as fast as he could when he heard about the landmines. And when he heard that they weren't like actual landmines, he said that, that reassured him, but he didn't think they were at first. Midori started like smacking him out of the ground as hard as he can, as hard as he can, going up in the air. And eventually Midori would jump on one, see him flying high in the sky. And he lands on the landmines in the air, or like, like, like pokes one of them, which triggers them all. Midori is in shock with his high as fast as he could. Then Midori landed on his feet, shooting forward, using a, using a burst of 15%. That was enough to get him over the finish line, but Midori's legs tensed up. Went to the finish line, Midori clapped for himself, saying, Alright, I did it. And he did that so fast that Midori was able to wait around 5 or 10 minutes before anyone else showed up to the finish line. But his explosion kind of like, pushed Shiroki into the ground a bit, because his body wasn't as durable to that kind of thing. But so the second place came Bakugo, third place came Ida, fourth place, Todoroki. Now, everyone's keeping eyes on Midoriya, but people, well, some person that was, well, someone that was, that wasn't expecting Midoriya to do this good, it was one for all. Night Eye. He was watching Midoriya in shock, because Midoriya got one for all, like, well, almost, well, almost two months ago, but he's doing this good with it. But you can tell him Midoriya's basically doing this good, because he can think on his feet. And with that, he thinks that Mir that's probably, probably, probably Mirko, not Mirko, Mirio's only weakness. He can't think on his feet fast enough, or his plan won't be as good. Yes, Mirio is smart, but not as smart as Midoriya. Midoriya's intelligence is top of UA, besides the teachers. So, yeah. But, uh, the cavalry battle. This time, so no one, no, one wanting, no one wanting to be on his team, it's a lot of people. And then Midoriya starts thinking back to, to the entrance exam. Midoriya walks, to, walks up to Ibarra, and she's like, you know, I, I, wait, you know, hmm, why should I join you? Midoriya points out that, well, if you, if you were against him, he would destroy, a, like, a lot of her plants. And when he when she heard that, or a lot of her vines, she heard that, was like, all right, then, that's, that's a reason. So she joins his team. And says, also, if Shota were to attack you, I can actually defend against the flames using my own shockwaves, which she's thankful for, even Bakugo. So Ibarra, Tokuyami, and Ochako. Midoriya is actually, actually a horse, Ibarra is the rider. And Tokuyami and, Tokuyami and Midoriya are the main defenders. Actually, no, Ochako is the rider, Midoriya... I don't, think, I, don't think, I don't think the winner has to be the. I don't think the point. The person with the points has to be the writer, but it make it make more sense for like, for like Ochako to be the one to be going writing, while, while Tokuyami, Ibarra, and Midoriya defend and Midoriya defender. I, I hit myself in the face. Midor Midoriya, Ibarra, and Tokuyami are defending her. Matsumi is on Bakugo's team. Cause yeah. Or actually, she's on any team that wasn't. That, that was Ibarra was on. She took Ibarra's place for any team she was on. Now, all of one needs to be rapid growth. They're going to push to be like Midoriya. So, Kirishima, actually on, actually on the verge of unlocking Red Riot Unbreakable, but only like one, like one or two limbs can go into Unbreakable. But only only no, no notable thing that happens or happens is like, well, first off, Midoriya can carry all of his teammates to go forward as fast as he could. As fast as, he could, as fast as he can. So, if he can carry all of them, they can drop down, but make sure Ochako doesn't fall off. And... Every, every team that wins stays the same, but uh, everyone at the second exam, I think the second exam is the same. But Midoriya almost, almost, not, almost knocks out Todoroki. Almost. He punched Todoroki in the gut, but he didn't want to knock out Todoroki because he thinks that could be a good fight. So he uses 5% punch to the gut. 
we don't give some which just make Shadow throw up all over his team. But NG can already tell that Shadow can go all against Midoriya. That will not beat Midoriya. Midoriya is either going to endure it or can use an attack to counter his all out. This is a spoiler, but NG knows Midoriya might end up being the winner of this. So NG walks up, walks up to All Might. I assume he knows about he knows about Small Might. I assume he does. So let me check this. Okay, so Endeavor doesn't, doesn't know about one for all, but let's just say that he knows that. Oh yeah, All Might just has this injury that makes him makes him just look weaker. He doesn't know that All Might has a time limit. Endeavor walks, walks up to Small Might, talking to him for a bit, and as they talk, Endeavor then says, "I can tell that he's your student." Because the way he uses attacks are different. You, 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 you choose him as your student because his attacks, or his, well, his not his attacks, his quirks are very similar to yours. I might nod saying, yes, I think that if I trained him properly, his power might even, might even rival mine. And then we hear that chuckle saying, well, well, number one and number two heroes, number one and number two heroes have their own prodigy, prod, not prodigy, but have their own opponent. I guess, not opponents, um, students. Now, only is aware of Shoto and how, I guess how, distant he is from everyone, and All Might wants to take a jab at Endeavor, saying like, the only difference between their students is number one hero takes good care of his student and treats him like a, like a person. Number two hero treats his, treats, his, treats his student like a weapon and an object, or just as a human weapon and an object. They were froze, saying, what the hell are you trying to say? That's when All Might says, what I'm trying to say is, I take care of a complete stranger's kid like they're my own child. You treat your own child like a stranger, and it's a random kid off the street. Never froze immediately, and I had to think, you know, that's kind of true. I never kind of had an awakening moment if All Might knew, not All Might knew, if All Might saw what Endeavor's doing is wrong. And Endeavor's like, no. Well, All Might's using more emotion and care in his student, and his student's strong, stronger than Shoto. So Never start, never start thinking if he would try to take care of Shoto, well, properly, like, like an actual father instead of a trainer, that might be better. So Endeavor's having his, his develop, develop, developing arc here, or starting it at least here. But, um, the fight. Midoriya versus Shinso. Shinso starts talking about how Midoriya does like the same rant, but Midoriya, when you hear about Ojiro, like, Midoriya doesn't answer Shinso's question, but first interrupts him when, like, first Ojiro tells Midoriya about Shinso. Shinso starts, starts talking about trash about how Midoriya is born a perfect, like, perfect quirk. Midoriya just has, like, a lie saying he started like, training his quirk properly recently, but as soon as Shinso says, You're so lucky about having this quirk, Midoriya literally kneels saying, Shinso, you're the lucky one. You're born with a, with a quirk that wouldn't harm your body at all. Only thing is, your quirk is known as evil. If people saw how I used my quirk before, people would think of my quirk as stupid and useless. If you don't, if I can't control, control my, quirk, my quirk properly, I will kill myself. Because my, my body is in so much pain and, and agony. I had, to, I had to weaken myself to do this. So far, I've been doing this tournament as a, as a, weakened, as a weakened fighter. I'm only like this because my because I trained my my, my weakened power to be more to be more advanced. I'm working my weapon UA to develop my power to, to its fullest. But Shinto, you're the lucky one. You're the lucky one, not me. And so I was like kind of amazed by this, or shocked that Quirk should do that. But suddenly, Midori appears right in front of Shinto, grabbing his head, slamming him into the ground. Shinto was pinned down, and with Midori's strength and being allowing him to get up, Midori is the winner. When Midori helps, helps, Shin, helps Shinso up, just gonna like, big dusting him off, and then Shinso then says, "Sorry about that. I didn't know quirks were like that." And Midori laughs, saying, "And don't worry." But Shinso on the back, and Shinso walks out of bounds with Midoriya, and we're just gonna go to the next fight, which is like Kirishima versus Tetsu Tetsu. It's gonna be one round of this. Kirishima like blocking all of Tetsu Tetsu's blows, and Tetsu Tetsu's like, you know, you're not going all out. You're not, you're not even using your quirk, or your quirk, quirk or something. But then Kishima says, I'm not quirkless, I'm trying to get an opening on you. Then Tetsu was confused suddenly, then Kishima will just like pump him in the chin, using a heart and fist. And then Kishima will go Red Riot Unbreakable in one arm. And uppercut, not uppercut, well, just right hooks Tetsu Tetsu right in the chest. So already breaks through, through Tetsu Tetsu's steel, sending him at flying out of bounds. Tetsu Tetsu, still standing, throws up, throws up a little bit of, like, just coughs up some blood, and then throws up, falling over. Kishima will laugh, saying, saying, all right. He claps, he claps for himself, and then, now, like, the spot where Tetsu Tetsu and Kishima were, were to fight again, that's gonna be where Midori and Kishima, not Kishima, Midoriya and, um, and Todoroki fight. Todoroki has the same rant, and does the same backstory, but then, Midori just talks him up, like, Midori dodge all the attacks, or using flicks to destroy the ice, and Midori still talk him up, does talk him up to, like, you know, 
go all out. Drip Turtle King says, I'll go all out if you can as well. Midori chuckled hearing this, saying, All right then. Doki will unleash the, the giant just block of ice towards Midoriya. Well, Midoriya would use full calling pu to push through it as a little like, lightning and block some of the damage off, but not all of it. Just like very like, small hints of the fire and ice. Once he gets close enough, Midoriya will launch out a blast of 1 for 100%, and the kind of looks like a shockwave. Uh, excuse me. You can see his under shockwave will hit Shoto. It breaks, it breaks one of Shoto's arms. It breaks one of Shoto's arms and dislocates the other. Killing Shoto right out of bounds into the steel gate. And Midoriya gets some burn in his arm and, well, some burns all over his whole body. But they're not, not all of them are severe. Ice, ice cooled down a lot of his burns. But mainly just like gets a few burns on his arms. So those are where the worst burns are. But yeah. And Midoriya's like, like a burn on his cheek too, that's it. Now, Midori stops the winner, and we're gonna go to Kirishima versus Bakugo. Kirishima almost, almost knocked out, knocked out Bakugo, but once Bakugo is punched in the face by a red right and breakable fist, Bakugo falls to the ground and will let out a Houtzer Impact. With the Houtzer Impact, the Shockwave shoots Kirishima almost out of bounds, but Kirishima will lose his balance and fall over, which results in Bakugo winning because Kirishima's head hit out of bounds area. He hardened it up as so it wasn't knocked out, but no one could really tell that Bakugo wasn't conscious because he was like just, like, just you know, holding himself up. But his body just passed, just passed out and was too prideful to be to lay on the ground. But when he heard he was the winner, he shook his head and woke up. So Bakugo kind of won by, by accident and default. But once he heard that Skosuke Shim was out of bounds, he immediately got pissed off, saying, Oh, I, 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 I want a rematch, I want a rematch, I want a rematch. Kishina couldn't have a rematch. His red right unbreakable was a little weekend. So, yeah. But um, back to this thing. Final fight is Midori vs. Bakugo. Bakugo is a little messed up because Kirishima punched him right in the face with a, with a red right and breakable fist, so that, that stunned Bakugo for a while. Plus, his face is kind of numb, so he's a little off. Then, eventually, um, when the fight starts, Midori tells Bakugo he's trying to end this in one blow. So Midori will put his, in, not his index finger, his, his ring finger and middle finger on his thumb. Kind of like, I guess, you, I guess your middle school is known as Silent, Silent, Silent Coyote, but. But Ariel's channel, channel one frog goes through those three, not three, well, he has three fingers, or two, I guess, and then, and it's 100%, one, so he flings it towards Bakugo. Bakugo will push Bakugo back, and when Midori said saw it wasn't end, saw it wasn't ended in one move, Midori will jump behind Bakugo, grabbing him and suplexing him. Bakugo, Bakugo tries to get back up, but Midori being squeezing Bakugo as hard as he can, Bakugo as hard as he can. With that, Bakugo being suplexing air faster and passes out just from lack of air. As Midori lets go, Bakugo is able to cough up some air again, but Midori was already, was already pronounced the winner. Bakugo is pissed off, saying, Damn it! Is he considered all his matches so far? Losses. He couldn't beat, couldn't get ahead of Midoriya. But and Bakugo even got, kind of came crying in the middle of the, middle of the arena. But when he started crying, Midori just covered his face with his hand and picked him up, saying, saying Prideful Katsuki Bakugo shouldn't be crying in the middle of the arena like this. Or an arena. Bakugo started crying a little bit more, but not out of just feeling weak, out of feeling bad. They felt bad that he was this rude to Midori, and Midori always, always felt admiration or care for him. So Midori walked him out of bounds as he like, oh, he has pretty much scratched his face, like bleeding a bit, I'm just covering it up. So yeah, so, Midori brought him, brought him into the locker room, and the only match Bakugo, did, Bakugo, Bakugo didn't consider a loss was for Bethel Chaco. Well, Chaco saw that Bakugo losing, that, that damaged him a lot more than he damaged her and her reputation. Not reputation, but I guess her little, her little bit of pride. Bakugo's whole pride was shattered by someone he considered weaker and inferior. When in reality, he was the one inferior, emotionally and physically now. And quirk wise, I guess. But Bakugo, Bakugo kept crying as he then says, Midoriya, I'm sorry. This Midori chuckled, saying, Don't sing, don't, don't, call, don't call me Midoriya, that's too formal. It's Deku. Bakugo, Bakugo kind of chuckled, wiping his tears, saying, Alright then, Deku. Next time, next time, next time we meet, I want to rematch. And Midori left him, Alright, just prepare to cry again. Midori, Midori went out to get his medal. Bakugo, Bakugo number two. Hiroki, it wasn't in, wasn't in play, so. It's just Midoriya, Bakugo, and Tokoyami. So, yeah. Now. Uh, next day, they're choosing hero names. And Midoriya. Let me find a name for Midoriya. Okay, so I found two possible hero names for Midoriya. One of them was on Korra, pretty sure. The other one is just his normal, normal hero name, Deku. Now, um... Midoriya, you would write down two hero names on his on his whiteboard, and they're both pretty short. Deku, and then below that he has Atlas, 
the hero of hope. Well, you know, the hero that, that carries and rises hope. I'm pretty sure Alice in Greek mythology mainly carries the earth, like, keeps it up. So, yeah. But when they hear that, they think the both things are great. So Deku is put as Deku and Atlas. Just the pillar of hope, hero of rising hope. And yeah, then Deku just for Deku. So Midori is back, sits back down, and there are the recommendations. Night Eye is one of the is one of the recommendations as Midori spent two weeks training training with training with Gran Torino for the Sword Festival, so he doesn't doesn't need to train with him. It's recommendations from Night Eye, Endeavor, and other heroes. But Midoriya will go with Night Eye. Shoto was kinda of sad that Midori didn't go with Endeavor, but Midori promises Midori will promise, you know, next time we go next time we have hero studies or something, I'm going I'm going, I promise I'm going, going with Endeavor. So Shoto and Shoto nods and cool. So All Might will drive Midoriya to to Night Eye's agency, and when it's kind of awkward with with them, and before All Might drives off, and and then Night Eye walks inside, Midori, Midori pulls them pulls them both like pulls them, pulls them both back pulls them both back, saying, "All right, this is pretty this is too awkward. Tell me what happened." It's neither of them told told Midori a thing, so so it's reluctantly they talk about they talk about like you know oh their whole thing, and this Midori says, "So one small argument turned turned into this." All right, no, we'll, both of you make up now, both of you. And Midori did not leave, or let them, let them let either of them leave until they they just settled it. Mirio, Bubble Girl, and Santa Peter even stood outside watching. And you see, they were forced to patch it up. Small Might is Small Might, so no one, this one, no one knows Small Might. But they patch it up, and then they go, they go inside. Not I still gives Midori the same test, but Midori's faster. Midori can use around 10, he just goes, goes between 10 and 15% on one for all. 15% is his limit, but his legs don't, um, don't, don't, like, tense up as much. Like, they tense up, but he can still move. So, with his little bit of extra speed, he grabs the thing from Mike from Nairai and stamps his paper. Nairai will chuckle, saying, The future even showed, you're not showed. It showed, I would not, I would not, I would not just, I wouldn't keep it from you. You're just too fast. I'm very laughing, and why'd you try? Nairai says, I'm testing a theory to, to see if I, if I can oppose the future. I'm very laughing. Oh, my mind if I try it with you? It seems fun. Not I would nod. And for for a few for a few days, they go over they go over uh, the whole one for all. Not one for all. Well, she one for all in different villains. Midori and Miria begin training too, as Miria is able to beat the hell out of Midoriya for those few days. So Midori can advance one for all further in strength. Midori is able to push his like his limit is fifteen percent, like I said. But within those few days, so Midori Mir being beating the hell out of him from morning to night. Um, Mirio is able to stay to, to stay permeated longer and go farther with permeation. So yeah, but Midoriya, Midoriya is also able to push one for all from his actual like the perfect spot for him is like 13, like 11 to 13 percent. Well, he actually pushes his actual perfect limit to 17 percent. His limit being 25. So Midoriya's Midori's, Midori's limit is pushed up by 10. So yeah, so Midoriya advanced. And Midori also was able to study with Santa Peter a lot. This made, this made his intelligence even greater, which he didn't need, but it's greater. No recovery, no recovery girl. Bubble girl. And him got along pretty well. Midori was started thinking about the perfect thing, like the like perfect thing for everyone was laughter. So Midori already knew already knew what to do for class when he got back, which were full of laughter, but Bakugo, Bakugo, and I guess, hmm. I'm pretty sure it's just Bakugo that, need, that, need, that needs more laughs. Maybe maybe Momo and Jiro, but they they laugh quite a bit. So, yeah, and Shoji too, I guess. Uh, back to this. So, one day Midoriya does like like the reading files with Sen Peter, and he discovers Overhaul. Sen Peter tells him about Overhaul, and suddenly Midoriya, Midoriya gets a text. The text is from Ida. Yes, and Jenny is still attacked by Stain, but Tensei broke one of Stain's arms in this one. Because, like I said, he trained he trained with Ida a lot. Ida wanted to catch up to Midoriya, wouldn't let Tensei leave, leave training no matter what, unless it, was, unless it was hero duty. Or eating something. But, yeah, so Tensei got stronger and faster, was able, was able to break one of Stain's arms. But Ida was able to send a text to Midoriya to rely on him, because he already felt he was outmatched and knew he was. So, when when he sent a text to Midoriya, Midoriya told Centipeter, or he's, he's, he's going to shoot off, shoot off to Hosu. Not I asked why, because he walked in, Midoriya says his friend's in danger. Mirio then says, well, do, you me, do you want me to come with you? Midori, Midori chuckles as he says this. I can st I can take on Stain alone. You hear that? 
that's when like when Midori gets out of the earshot. No, that's when Nadia's like, like Centipeter or 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 Mirio. Keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on him from the, from the distance. And Mirio Mir, Mir, Mirio sits up and leaves. The Midorio will just only put on the put on the this the shirt and well she you know he wears a jacket only. He puts puts he puts a hood on so he so Sting can't see his face. The Midori shoots off using thirty percent thirty percent of one throw and went as fast as he could. And he arrives right as Sting's about to stab Ida, but blade blades too close. Midori puts his hand right under the blade, letting Ida not Ida letting Sting stab his hand. But he's able to push up, grabbing the hilt of the sword and twisting it to the point where one for all are in his hand, the durability and strength, will, sh will snap the blade right off, and makes the blade fall out of Midori's hand, or through his hand. Sting saw Midori was actually risking, risking his hand for Ida, and can immediately tell Midori is a, I guess a, let's say, a true hero. When he says that, well, when he sees that, he then says, hmm, a true hero arrives. I'll have a challenge then. And he's only fighting with a broken arm because no one, no, no one can tell it's broken. But Midori then laughs, saying, Your arm's broken. Saying, Fro, saying, How do you know that? This Midori says, And never mind that. Pumps, he pumps her straight stain right in the face as, as Midori's moving faster than stain. Midori's moving at 15% of one for all. Midori then goes to 18%, which is making his legs freeze up a bit. But when he goes to 18%, he's able to knock stain clean out. He was just Google going faster and faster to, to mess with stain. But by the time stain's knocked out, Midori is able to take his glove off, and will use him in some medical, some, like some stuff from his belt to patch up his hand. Then, and eventually he does call, call for an ambulance to, to come. Well, boom, he's about to, well, he tries to, but they don't answer, and that's when they pull up. Midori already called them. So, they arrive, they see a knockout Stain, and the Midori's just sitting on him. But, Stain, each time he moves, Midori just grabs his arm and twists as hard as he can, as he can making Stain's broken arm worse. But... They patch up. Um, also, by the way, if you guys can tell, because the sensei broke, since they broke um, Stain's arm, that can I can really tell you guys that you know Stain, cause Stain didn't injure Tensei as bad. All Stain really did is basically just, like, just mess with, just basically just damage the nerves in one of Tensei's arms and one of his legs so badly that it's hard to like move. Like he has to use a cane to walk around, but when his arms can can't move fully. Like, well, not well, it can move fully, but it's harder to move. Plus, it's like Parkinson's where it shakes all the time. So that messes, that messes with Tensei's quirk. Went to the point where he has, to, where he has to retire from being a hero, like, he, like in canon. But he's still qualified to be Ida's teacher. Ida thanks Midoriya. Ida wasn't as, wasn't as injured in canon. Not in canon. As injured as he was in canon. And Chodo was not injured at all. And with this, Stain... Oh, Stain. Not that I lied to him. He gave Midoriya permission to leave. So, yeah. But with that, Midoriya does get the credit of defeating the hero. The hero killer. But they also gives him the credit to, to Native, the hero Midoriya saved. They give, like, they give most of it to Midoriya, but they say, you know, once Native got stabbed, Midoriya Midori took it from there. So, yeah. Now, the next arc, let me check. Now, I'm pretty sure that I had Shigaraki decay some of Midoriya's, like, body, but, um, I was bringing that up because Midoriya would end up going back to Tomato Tonight Agency later, and the Midoriya would be, would be in the changing room with Mirio. Mirio you know, saw the giant muscle with the multiple guards on Midori's body, and not happy to go in there after going to the gym. They all looked at Midori's body in awe, or Sun Peter, pretty sure Sun Peter's a guy. So, Sun Peter's in there, and when he sees when they see Midori's body, they're, they're, they're shocked. For one, Midori still has an ungodly amount of scars. But, also, you know, they, see the, they see the fist imprint, and Mirio and Nara know what that is, until they actually just ask, and Midori then says, Yeah, it's from All Might. This one, not I asked was on purpose, and Midori says, No, I was pushing him too far in training by almost uh, by, uh, by, uh, by just outsmarting him, and to get me away, he, he punched me, but I was too close, and the punch landed. So, yeah. So, that was mainly an attempt to make a shockwave to push Midori back, but not actually hit him, but it did, so. Eh. But then he points out the decay mark on his chest, which is actually just like. It would be a handprint if it didn't spread so far, but it's more like. It's more like just a little line, like a, like a line from like his front where his heart is going down to his waist, and then it just shoots off and like just like kind of like a giant tree, a very thin giant tree on his body. But where the branches come from, it looks like a handprint, which it which it is. But yeah, he points that out, saying yeah, it's, it's still healing, but yeah, it, it should be good. And we're going to point out that this imprint just fully he just fully healed, like like the day he was fighting, he's fighting he's fighting the Nomo. Well, not the, the day he's fighting Shigaraki. 
we put, we put the suit back on. This one, this one not, not I recommend to Midori gets a different suit, or at least a less, a less, I like guess, a, a suit that doesn't does require Midori takes take forever to put on. So they put in a request for Midori to get a new suit, and I was able to get Midori there for an extra few days for the suit to arrive and get proper training, not proper, but better training. And with that, Midoriya, Midoriya, Midoriya was able to like, just catch Nanai and his group up on paperwork. They're, they're, they're completely free now. But, uh, yeah. So, so Midoriya's new suit. It's just a green hoodie. Well, just a green, like, I like a green shirt, but with a hood. Like, it's not a hoodie, but it's like a green skin tight shirt that's fireproof, but it has a hood. It has the breather on it still. And Midoriya has a black cape on the back of it. Well, not, actually, not black cape, oh. A very, very, very dark, dark red cape. With hints of yellow on it, so just for Grand Trino. Then he has gloves that are uh, they're they're pretty dark black, but they have hints of red and pink on them, or red that's that's mixed with pink for Cover Girl and his own colors for One for All plus All Might. And yeah, there's any the yellow represent represent Grand Trino and uh, Night Eye, and Mirio too, I guess. If there's black, it can it can just just represent Sun Peter if he wants to. But Bubble Girl didn't do didn't do too much for him, so she didn't really matter. But yeah, Midori comes back to UA, and they're all shocked to see Midori's growth because he did get a little bit taller. His his height went from like five foot eight to like five foot nine now. Because in the beginning, Recovery Girl had him, had him on a different diet that made him get a little bit bigger. So he went from five foot five to five foot seven, and then he grew five foot eight, but just kind of just naturally. And then he was on a different diet, so made him, well, not different, it was just a better diet, I guess. That made him, that made him get bigger. Plus, his body is very similar, very similar to Mirio now. It's not as tall. Now, the teachers versus student thing. So, Midoriya will be fighting All Might with Bakugo. And Midoriya and Bakugo are actually on pretty good terms, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to anyone else. So the fight starts. Actually, well, with Sato and Kirishima, that's a big difference. Because Sato can, well, can last longer with his quirk. But Kirishima is also a little bit smarter, too. So he has Sato rush you run into the alley as Kirishima will handle handle Cementos. But he has Sato look like he's fighting with him. But until Kirishima makes a giant smoke screen by punching one so hard, the smoke comes out. So allows Sato to run, to run for, cover, for cover. Or not for cover, but as like they just loop around. Cementos saw this coming. But then he forgot that Kirishima could go into red right and breakable now. Fully. And by the way, Kirishima didn't train with, with fourth generation or fourth gen for his name, but he trained with Fat Gun. And he trained with Tamaki too. And Ochako and Tsuyu were able to train. Everyone that trained with other pro heroes, it was during like the whole internship thing or after. So Asui did train, did train with Selfie actually, so just Ochako that trained, trained with Nature, right? But everything else kind of went differently. They trained with different pro heroes, unless, well, if they did after the original ones, but. So Kirishima trained a fat gun and was able to do red right and break well fully. And now he was able to push through all of Sementos' barriers while he was doing with Sato. And Kirishima was able, was able to just like flatten the flatten Sementos. Like he like he like he stamped like he's he trampled him. It ran right over him. Then Sato had passed out just from using his quirk. So Kishima caught him, caught him, and Denki was able to just use the same ability he does, like he does in, in like the um the license exam. So yeah, he was able to use those discs. Those discs and was able to actually like, like just like just disable Nezu's whole. I'm pretty sure it was. I forgot what it was, but it had a wrecking ball in it. He was able to just, like, disable that, and the wrecking ball came back around and hit and hit the whole truck thing, and it knocked it over. But Denki and, and Mina were still trapped, and Mina had to melt them, had to melt them out. But with that, it ended in a draw. Like, so most matches ended in a draw or a victory. There's there's one loss, and that was with that was with Mineta and Saro. Saro didn't get knocked out, but Mineta actually accidentally like threw a piece of of one of his balls to to Saro, and Saro fell into it after failing to tape up to tape up Midnight. So yeah, Saro couldn't get couldn't get loose, and Midnight was able to knock him out using her quirk and to knock out Mineta. But yeah. So, Midori versus, versus Midori, Midori, and, Midori and Bakugo versus All Might. Then the fight starts, Bakugo has Midori have a plan on it immediately. So, when All Might arrives, Midori plans to, like, you know, just 
Like, you tell Sabaku, he's going to use as much tax as he can, but those attacks are going to be on his limit, making him freeze up. So when he freezes up, that should be Bakugo's Q. So, Midori will amp up both his arms to around, to around 28% one for all. This is all, all, you know, all kind of going blow for blow, but not exactly. Now, eventually, this leads to, like, one point, I want to punch Midori into the ground, and Bakugo, Bakugo throws Gauntlet. The Gauntlet ended up exploding as Bakugo, Bakugo was able to get Midori away, and Omni was pushed back. And, coincidentally, the explosion broke both of All Might's restraints. But, when they try to stop the match, All Might says, I have faith in these boys, they're working together as a team now. They're, not, they're no longer enemies or rivals, they are allies. So when they ever heard that, they're okay with this now, or they're both hesitant still. And All Might's kind of nervous, because he doesn't want to make another injury to Midoriya. But, suddenly when Midoriya's kind of waking up, Midoriya stood up, as in, just feels something wrong, as in tells Bakugo, run. Bakugo jumped, like, shot himself right out of the window as he told, as, like, Midori was serious about this, so Bakugo got away, putting the building with a little black whip shooting everywhere. And the black whip even smacked All Might into the ground. All Might only had to avoid this, he saw Bakugo escaping, and you got Bakugo running right out of, right, like, right out of the arena. Kept going on as Azawa cancels out Midori's quirk, or tried to, but that's when, and that's when, like, like Nezu says, let's let this happen. No one's going to be harmed, we can see the full scale of this. Rampage with Black Whip and Midori goes on for around 10 minutes before the whole city is flattened. Well, the whole city, like, a good portion of it is flattened. And, and Midori, Midori is able, was able to reel it in, focusing some of it just around his, his, his arm, and it seems it can't harm the user, or I assume it can't. Well, actually it can, but let's say, just because it was brought on the user, it dispersed. Now with that, Midori, Midori, Midori fell to the ground panting and sweating, and almost crying, because he almost hurt Bakugo, and he did hurt All Might. He, he slapped All Might right across the face with it. So All Might, well, he's like, a, like a scar on his face now, but, yeah. But that was Midori's way of paying back All Might for the giant fist imprint. Let's say that. Now, let me go to the... Now, once it's done, they, they just talk about, about Midori's quirk, and they bring him all the way to uh, the forest, where they still do the same thing. Now, Midori spends time in the forest, and they get dropped off there still, and they fight the mud monsters. But Midori will try to use Black Whip just in the forest, and he does get through, they still get through in a few hours, but Midori's able to extend Black Whip a little bit farther, he, he did, get, did get better training. They did postpone that too, so. They best one by like two or three days. This is another time for Midori to train, to train with it from like 5 a.m. to around 9 p.m. So with that, Midori did control Black Whip a bit, and Tamaki was his main teacher for that, because Tamaki could use tentacles like he could, uh, like, with it when he ate, when he ate, like, took, like, took, like, took, like, or something. <coughs> Like, if you talk to Yaki, he can use tentacles or something like that. Then Shoji and Sarah were also his teachers. Eventually, when, he, when Midori did have, like, a decent control over, like, just small parts of Black Whip, he was okay with that. When he got out of the Force, that's better, that's better training, because he had opponents that were trying to kill him. So, so Midori was able to use Black Whip to grab onto small things, that's really it, because they're, really, they're really small tendrils. But Midori, Midori will train in the Force for days with um, Tiger... Using training on Black Whip. Because Tiger didn't have, didn't have Midoriya dance. He had yeah, Midoriya like, go, beyond, go beyond his limits trying to grab things from a distance. So, yeah. And Sarah was joining the training, on the training was, was joining the training so long, along with Soap with Shoji. And when Class B arrived, Ibarra joined in. And Midoriya and Ibarra are on good terms. Because like, like, Ibarra has, has to respect Midoriya. She has to. Because he's one of the reasons she got far in far the sports festival. She's still lost. Or forfeited originally. You know, you know, she lost to Ida still. But yeah. So he don't reason pretty far in the court festival and other things too. Now Midori able to use Black Whip at, 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 at a respectable distance, but one day Midori just one night needed to go to Sue Dakota. Only muscular charging out of the forest, and when not the forest, out of the, the stone, I guess. When must when muscular is close enough, one of the targets that they are told to just be careful about, like. Well, Shiroki used, like, you know, had a capture list, took a Yami and Bakugo, that was the list. But, one of the students that they were told to be careful of. Kirishima and Midoriya. Kirishima's Red Riot and Red Bull would be a big problem. So, yeah, but, uh, Midoriya's a whole different problem, because if they, they, they had to fight him, fight him enough, or not fight him, but if they had to fight him too long, Midoriya might end up killing them. And I'm pretty sure Nezu is the UA traitor, so. I'm pretty sure it was said in the manga, not said, but hinted that in the manga, Nezu is Nezu's the traitor. So let's say Nezu warned them about about Midoriya's um about Midoriya's black whip. 
So with that, they also wondered. They also got wondered about that. And yeah, so Kirishima, Midoriya, Todoroki. Those are the, those are the people, three people they wondered about. But never started using more emotion and care in his training with Todoroki, which Todoroki kind of can improve of. So with that, Todoroki, Todoroki got a little bit farther in growth, and he's able to use the same kind of powers he does when like they when they, train, when they train with him in the anime, like when all three. And you when one of these big three train with him in the anime. Hiroki's about as strong as that is that Todoroki. Um, yeah. Now when Oscar would charge him Midoriya, thinking, you know, he's a strong opponent, he'd go all out not all out, but he'd just like, change from his whole body around his muscles around his whole body. And when him Midoriya when he tries to goes punch Midoriya, Midoriya, Midoriya would chuckle saying, hmm, fast. Not fast enough. And then he pushed behind Musky, Musky was his fist out, and he's using, he's using 18% of one for all. His arms and, and legs sensed up, well, one arm and two legs sensed up, and Musky was on the ground, like, holding his face, like, what the hell just happened? As Midoriya moved insanely fast. Koya saw that, and as he could tell, Midoriya was going to defeat, was going to defeat Muscular. But, but Midoriya's legs are okay now, as Muscular, Muscular got close enough to grab Midoriya, and Midoriya had at least black whip around, around Muscular's neck, squeezing as hard as he could. And with that, Musky started choking, he tried to try to get Black Whip off, but it was Midoriya, saying, hmm, this should work. Then Midoriya channeled one, 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 one frog through his arm, thumbing his fist right in Musky's face, and did it twice. And those two, those two 100%, 100%, 100% punches to his actual face, not any muscle or something, that knocked out Muscular. And Midoriya then just said, and for extra measure. He then picked up Musky, slamming his head against a piece of rock, knocking him out fully. Musky is out cold for a few hours. So Midori picked up Koda, running through the forest with his, with his arm bleeding a bit because it's broken. But he brought, it, brought him to Aizawa, and Aizawa was like, Alright Midori, that, are, you sure, are you sure you're okay? Do you have any arm patched up or anything? So Midori just ran inside, they put the bandage on his arm, and no one in 1A needed like extra tests. It was just, it was legit just Monoma. Just, just Monoma. But, so Midori's able to bandage up his arm with a splint, and he's able to move his arm a bit. He looked, 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 arm a little bit, but yeah. So Midori, Midori doesn't even want to fall on his arm, but he does like just like slap people if he needs to. So Midori can, 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 can just run through the forest. As Takuyami is able to kind of turn to reel in Black Shadow, and he's able to still show you, you know, just, just be close enough to punch me in the gut, and that it should subdue Black Shadow and knock me out, but Black Shadow will, will, will run rampant again after a few minutes. But eventually, they see Midori, they see Midori run through the forest, and they see Moonfish about to stab them both as Baku and Todoroki are, are avoiding him. But then Midori just jumps in the air, kicking Moonfish right in the face as Bakugo and Todoroki land an attack on him. So, so Moonfish is definitely out, down for the count. But then Midori looked at Black Shadow and Tokiyami saying, Well, not Black, not Tokiyami, just Black Shadow saying, Do you really want to do, want to do this with me here? Black Shadow is aware of, of Midori's power and immediately retreated back into Tokiyami, not wanting to fight Midoriya. So he took him and said, Did you just scare him? Midori nods saying, Yeah, most likely. But, yeah. Now, uh, other villains. So, Mid so Midori is running, running the bush with Tokuyami. Well, Tokuyami's kind of tired now, but Shoji's carrying him. So, Midoria, Shoji, Bakugan, and Todoroki are running through the forest. Then they compress, and he's running them with Magna about to knock out Ragdoll. Which, you know, uh, let me, let me check the names. Pixie Bob, that was, that was her name. So, Pixie Bob is about to be hit in the head by, by, by Magna. But suddenly, Shoji would make a diversion for. From his, from his compress, which led to Midoriya uppercutting Magna right in the face, breaking breaking his or her jaw, their jaw, let's say that he broke he broke Magna's jaw, so he Magna into a tree. And then they began coughing with a little bit of blood, just because Midoriya almost broke their jaw. But compressed it to Midoriya, and was like, damn it. And he just like just like just flew towards flew towards Midoriya. But Bakugo appeared right above Compress, slamming it uh slamming just like not slamming it, she just above him using AP shot, and one of the bullets one of, them, one of the blasts shot right through right through Mr. Mr. Compress' arm, which made him just like, oh, damn it, I, I have to treat Magna. So they were defeated, and Pixie Bob thinks Midoriya by kissing him on the cheek, and then they made Midoriya blush, put his head in the air, saying, thank you, but please back up. Eventually, they look for ragdolls, as no one has seen her for a bit, and then they, they see Spinner being like, retreating with uh, Mr. Compress and Magna, and they see Dobby about to actually Kill Pixie Bob, not Pixie Bob, Mando, not that. Uh, I'm about to kill Ragdoll. But Midoriya will grab, Rag, will grab Ragdoll, shooting, shooting her from the flames using his body. Then Todoroki will match Dobby's flames by using his own version of just, like, just compressed flames mainly. He will compress the flames in one point on his, on his hand, shooting out, shooting them out in a beam, 
fashion, kind of like Iron Man does. And Blue Fist like blast was a blaster, I guess. And that Blue Flame is able to shoot through through Dobby's and hit Dobby in the shoulder. Now that took a lot of energy on Shoto because he had to impress it a lot. But eventually they off to retreat. Even Toga is a little upset, but Toga got like got curb stomped by Ochako and Suyu. Like so, eventually Ochako was like able to to disarm disarm um disarm Toga using using some martial arts. These martial arts weren't like weren't like gunheads martial arts, but they were like they were just like just basic martial arts. But when Toko was able to get free, this led to Suyu slapping her in the back of the head using her tongue, and Ochako kneeing her in the jaw. So yeah, Toko's almost unconscious at this point, and all the villains retreat, not having a single target. And Shirai, when they came back, like, the Dobby, Dobby was holding a shoulder with, with a hole almost completely, like, shot through it. But then, anyways, the muscular's gone, so it's mustard. And by the way, um, what was it? Uh... But yeah, Tetsu 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 handled him like he was nothing. He legit covered his mouth and went as went as powerful as he could using his using his steel. Kendo was like a, like a shield, well not shield, but able to knock some of the smoke away. Tetsu Tetsu jumped in the air and legit elbowed up, elbowed up mustard in the back, almost snapping his spine. But yeah, it's unforced, and with Midoriya's arm being healed, and the doctors are just so confused. His arm is broken, but. Um, just the bone is, is harmed, nothing else. And then the bone didn't look too bad, so they were, they were able to heal it immediately. He's able to get to the hospital in like two days. There's no issues to get on the first day, but he, he, had to, he had to have a cast on like a week, that's really it. And after that week is up, his arm's okay. But Trevor Girl and All Might are thinking, like, you know, like his body is getting a very different one far to the point he's almost invinci invincible using it. Well, the next arc is the hideout raid, I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna check that. Okay, so the next arc is, um, is hideout raid. So, so Midori, 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 eh, Midori gets out of the hospital, and is actually, not, well, his mom is actually very okay with him staying in UA and being a hero, because, well, he's known as a hero to a lot of people, because he defeated the hero killer, got most of the credit for it, and then he trained with Night Eye, which a lot of people knew him for, because he, he did, a, like, a lot, of, a lot of patrols, stopping normal, normal thugs and everything. People kind of, if you know who Midoriya is, and you're a civilian, you would think that Midoriya might, or if you think, if you know about his bigger feats, you could think that he might be in the top 10 heroes straight out of UA. So, Inko's a, Inko isn't too worried about Midoriya. She's worried about, like, like, like you know, her injuries and gonna stop him in the future. As, this, she's very much aware that it's not, it's not UA, that she's doing very well with him, because he's advancing farther in his quirk. They're just worried that, well, she's just worried that he might injure himself again, and it might be too much. And Bakugo is not captured, but Momo still placed a tracker on one of the Nomus, and she fought that Nomu pretty good, along with Awase. So, but Momo, not Momo. So yeah, Momo. Um, I said Momo the first time, and then I said not, I said not Momo, because I think not Momo, not Momo. But. So yeah, Momo was able to get a decent, decent distance away, made a cannon, as, and just put a giant, giant rubber, rubber, rubber cannonball in it, put it at the Nomu's head, knock it to the ground, and then she proceeded to make, make her own chainsaw that was able like, to be handheld. And began fighting the Nomu with it. It's Owase. Like she stabbed it around the Nomu's neck. And then Owase was like, like welding it to, welding it in place. And once it was welded in place, the Nomu just kind of like just had to try to pull it out somehow. But then Owase had placed a tracker in the Nomu's hand. Where it wasn't really seen. Yeah, so. Well, had a, the whole attack on the force was a fail. But Off One saw it as a, as a fail too. Because he was shocked. But everyone's really strong at, strong at UA now. And Midoriya might actually be able, be able to defeat Mirio, or all three of the big three, if you chose to. Not if you chose to, but if you went all out, using Black Lip. He, he, he might, might be able to defeat all three. But Momo still reveals that she placed a track on the Nomu, and they actually want some students to participate, but this is when like the government's like, you know, no, this is like one of the most interesting films alive, we cannot allow them to participate in this. But well, Midoriya was like, waiting inside All Might's office hearing this, because he wanted to talk to All Might. But when the door started open, Marie went forward to jump back, and they started walking up to the office. So no one, no one could tell except All Might. And All Might heard that saying, "You heard the whole thing." Midoriya nods. That's when All Might then says, "Well, Midoriya, I don't want you to come, but if you, if you decide to, to, to assist in battle with us, I will, I will tell you this: I give you my wholehearted permission, permission to fight off one with me. But you know, the villain, I might, I might get in trouble for letting you do this." Midoriya nods. 
and just having that the, the main force that went to Cole all, all battle with Offlin is there a long back ago. So they hear this, Baku and Chuckle saying, So are we are we, are we going going with him or not? He does a little nervous with him and says, hmm, fine, I'll go. I do owe him, owe him a bit for saving me in the entrance exam, and I also owe him for saving me, for saving me against Stain. So this is my way of repaying him. So yeah, now the night of the raid. So Midoriya would end up also the dorms, the dorm thing that was established a few few days before this. Not that long, like a little bit after the forest, but not not um, not after the hideout raid. So Inka was okay with Midoriya going to the dorms because one. It's a class rep. Everyone, everyone would need their class rep with them. But also, he's a very good friend with everyone in UA. She's even a few kids from UA have gone to Midoriya's house. So yeah. Well, uh, back to this. So when the raid starts, Midoriya puts on a hero, puts on his hero suit, and goes to a nearby roof. And he waits on. He thinks he feels a tug on his cape, being a little confused, thinking it's a villain. He just reaches around with his hand ready for for a punch, and he sees it's Bakugo and Ida. Kirishima, Momo, and Tod Todoroki. Yeah, if you're right, I forgot Todoroki was there. So, this is me because Midoriya laughs, saying, what the hell, what the hell are, you, are you guys doing here? And Bakugo says, eh, well, we're waiting for the fight to start. So, so Midoriya just watches with everyone else as Omni busts in, and then Midoriya sees them all leave, because well, so Midoriya's been inside the base, and he didn't know where the other tracker was. But when more villains wait outside the Nomu's hideout, Midoriya arrives there, and he'd be in, like, when some Nomus are trying to, like, just go around inside. Midoriya and everyone else take, takes them down, but when heroes start arriving, they hide. But, um, back to, this before, not before, but a little, a little after that. Eventually, when Off One appears, which is with the rest of the league, Midoriya looks like Shigaraki, who's been training for, for one, not for one, for all, for all for one. And he's obviously a little bit bigger. Like, a little bit more muscular, I guess. So, this is when Midoriya will rush at him, I mean, fighting him. And Hiroki will try to start using the K, saying, So, my, 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 my decay didn't kill you. Midoriya laughs, saying, I can tell you're stronger now, but I'll tell you this. Your decay was a little too weak, because I was able to live through it, because you were knocked out. Hiroki heard that, saying, Well, I got stronger, that should, that should be the case now. Hold up. Sorry, I just had to fix that thing. This, mess, this thing on my, my eraser is messing up. Okay, it's good now. Like this. So, so Minoru and Shigaraki begin fighting with like some playful banter and, and just trash talk. But eventually, Offer One appears right next to Midoriya, punching him into the ground. Because All Might, not All Might, All For One took his attention off All Might and punched and started to beat Midoriya. And when All For One is beating the hell out of Midoriya, because Midoriya wasn't fast enough, this Midoriya says, Come on, Black Whip. And he, he knew his black from off them from all might, but yeah. He punched off one in the face, and off one says, Was that it? So then your black whip shoots out, wrapping around off one's neck, as Midori then threw him in the air. Off one tried to use like the tendrils to seal quirks or firstly firstly activate him. But Kishima stood in the way, he was going red, right, and breakable, and they broke well, they they couldn't pierce through Kishima's rock. Midori ran up them as fast as he could, a shadow then froze them. Well, shadow froze them then Midori, and then Midori ran up them. And he's, he needs Offman right in the face, sending him flying to the ground and breaking his mask. And eventually, he, the rest of the league has to deal with does deal with one with those students. But Shigaraki's decay is able to get, maybe make them all run away because they realize that it's the it's just it just spreads out the ground and if it touches them they're dead. But then suddenly if you, it's only two high end Nomu are, are released, and one of them, one of them begins fighting Shigaraki who's fighting Spinner at first. But then when Endeavor sees Shadows being pressured. He then he then just says, Shoto, freeze the lizard. Shoto then starts thinking, saying, Oh yeah. Then he freezes freezes half a spinner's body. It's like spinner falling unconscious. I'm pretty sure if you if a lizard gets too cold, it might just go into hibernation or die. But let's say it made, it made spinner go into hiber go into hibernation. So with that, Shiraki says, damn it. As R1 even saw that says, hmm, you guys can leave. He sends the league away. Or has Kurov Jason send them away. But then with that. The Hayanomu's been fighting fighting the UA students, plus Shoto and Endeavor and Endeavor. Instead so they're fighting Hood. Shoto's able to be able to freeze half of Hood's body, because Endeavor would use Parnit's burn, 
Now Shoto will never have a few new scars because of Hood, Hood's durability. Never has that scar on his face, but Shoto now has a scar on his arm. He tries to use, it to use that, comp that compressed beam, but this is when Hood just like smacks Shoto's hand in the air and makes Shoto burn, burn some of his arm. Or something like his hand is like, like control now because he can fully control it. But a little bit of his arm gets burned by his own hand and some of his shoulder too. So going from like his elbow all, all the way up to his shoulder, it gets burned. So yeah. Shoto, Shoto just freezes it to cool it down, but it still hurts a lot. And they still defeat Hood. And now um, Midori, and, Midori and All Might versus All for One. The two high no moves. Well, Hood was defeated, then the other one was defeated by Ida by just kicking it so hard it got crushed. That was just Ida using using her ship a burst full power. And he still tore his, tore the engines out of his leg, but or earlier he did that in the forest. Now Midori and All Might versus All for One. So Midori is going going as far as he, going as far and strong as he could in the whole fight. When All Might gets put in All Might form, he, Midori and him both hear about, about Shiraki being Shiraki being Hashimura's grandson, which makes All Might freeze up for a bit, and Midori has to grab All Might out of the way. Suddenly one of Midoriya's, one of Sinjo's about to stab Midoriya right in the head. It makes Midoriya's data sense activate, which forces one for all to go 100% shooting Midoriya right in the sky while holding All Might. And then Midoriya's legs are not broken, but they're, they're a little, like, they, 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 they tend to stop. So Midoriya lands, dropping All Might, saying, damn it, my legs hurt. They were bleeding a little bit, but they just mainly tensed up. Midoriya and All Might begin talking as Midoriya describes what he just felt, and All Might begins thinking of the fourth user's quirk, Danger Sense. But he doesn't, he doesn't look at the full, the full scale of it, so he can't really say it, Danger Sense. But he, realizes, like, he thinks Midoriya's bodies might just, might just go all out when sensing danger. That might be the cost of it, not the cost, but like, the ability of it. So Midoriya began fighting All, for one, all Might again, and eventually when All Might butts to use 96 to smash, Midoriya and Midoriya Midori puts his fist next to All Might as he goes 100% in his arm, and then yells 1 million percent. All Might chuckles as he yells a short smash, and does that punch is basically basically a little bit stronger than the United States smash, and once it lands, it knocks out off one completely, even cracking his skull. The weather still changes, but once it like once the weather changed, Midori, Midoriya held his head up in the sky as rain as rain began falling. So, the Midori falls on his back laughing, saying, saying, we did it. We defeated the number one villain in the world. But, but Midori began thinking about Shigaraki and how he, was getting, how he got, could tell he was stronger. And Midori immediately realized something, but he didn't want to say it in public. So, like, this is kind of just me saying, you know, Midori's intelligence is able to decipher Shigaraki's off one training. But, yeah. Now, where they were, where they were, where they were sent, like, was just a Dr. Ujiko, not actually Dr. Not, not Dr. Ujiko actually, it was, he was sent to Katsumakia, say that? Uh, uh, yeah. Now, once, once Midoriya and All Might are in the hospital, All Might does, does announce his retirement, but he does say that he'll be working, he'll, be, he'll he's glad to work alongside some heroes, or, or as a, as a, side, as a sidekick, or just for, for some help. So like I said, Small Might does do some martial arts on the side, which does enhance his big form. So All Might can do at least like one or two strong punches in his big form, but that's all. But Small Might now is a little bit more muscular. Now so far his body is a little lean, that's it. I'm probably gonna upload like side parts of this because the Meyer Damien movies are actually really good, both of them. So I'll do like, I'll do, like a side part that's like, like 30 minutes probably, just like the whole, the, like both movies. I'll, I'll, I'll decide if I want to or not, but yeah. But, um, like this. So, next arc is going to be provisional license exam, but I'm not going to go over that yet. So, once Midori and I'm in the hospital, they're chilling out for a bit, and Midori is talking about how Shiraki was stronger. Now, Recovery Girl is in the office with them, and as Midori starts talking, Midori then says, So, often can give and, can give and take quirks, right? Well, it might be possible there's some other way to do that, because of his intelligence and the way he uses quirk. I can guess he might. Quick, sorry. Okay, I'm back. So, um, uh, Deku will tell All Might that Shigaraki might possibly be able to get one frog in a different way, and when All Might hears that, he doesn't think, it, think it's too impossible. Then he brings up Midoriya's just danger sense thing. 
It doesn't go into the, well, it goes into danger sense after Midori describes it in depth. And Midori thinks it might be possible. So, so Midori, after hearing that, he does go just go to the new UA dorms instead of going home like usual. He is there, he sees Inko, Inko with a moving truck and all the little Nelf Midori stuff in it. It's like one of those very small U hauls, like the size of like the basic, like a basic like, Tahoe or something. So, so Midori moves all the stuff inside, being able to carry most of it himself. Because one, Midori is a lot bigger. It's a lot bigger, and he can carry a lot more because his physical body is a lot, like, a lot better. He had a really good one with Cannon, but this one is just different. So, yeah. It looks like Bear's body is like like prime All Might. Like it looks like that, but there's like a lot less tall. It's very muscular. Or like, like muscle is one way to say it. So yeah. When Midoriya was someone once Midoriya moved all the stuff in, they all were like you know hey we should like do do, do, do this like room competition. Now, Midori's room is very similar to Kirishima's in that. It's very similar to Kirishima's now, but also full of All Might memorabilia and pictures of his mom. And he even has a picture of him and Recovery Girl. And everyone's like, oh, you know, how, like, what's your picture of her? He says, oh, I injured myself using training my quirk. Me and her were, were around a lot. We're into there a lot. So, he's like his grandma. They hear that, and they think they think it's kind of cute. And he even has pictures of a few people, a few people from Class 1A put up, and people that Midori had pictures with. They, they kind of fell for Midoriya's... It wasn't a trap, they just... They think is very cute, so they vote for Midoriya. Which results in Midoriya coming in second place. Midoriya, Midoriya only lost by, by one vote, and that one vote was because... Well, that page... Well, he, Pictoru voted, voted for Sato instead of Midoriya, so... That resulted in Sato winning. And this one Midoriya says, as he voted for Sato too, because the cake, the cake was good. But most of the girls in 1A voted, voted for Midoriya because he had pictures with everyone in 1A. But, yeah, that one vote changed it, because of Toru. Now, eventually we're going to go to, like, I guess a provisional, a provisional license exam. And during this time, Midoriya was actually just kind of ready for, for, uh, for I guess, uh, say it. Uh, he was more than was just ready to pass. So, when they have to, like, when they have to, like, just score points, Midoriya was actually was scoring points very easily, like, it wasn't really hard, which kind of made it just other teams mad. But Toga was not like she wasn't. She wasn't Kami. This, this is actually the actual Kami because I tried to check on her in the jaw, and that broke Toga's jaw. Toga's just healing currently, so she can't really be Kami. So eventually, as like as the actual Kami tries to just get Midoriya, she uses an illusion of Ochako. Well, the way Ochako was talking, Midoriya could already tell it wasn't Ochako. And he just let out a giant, a giant punch of one for all using like 15 20 percent. And that would push Kami back a bit. That's Midoriya's limit now it went from around like 18 to 22. So, so yeah. And he was able to, to beat Kami. And now we're going to go to when they had to rescue people. Now Midoriya's able to rescue people. And Bakugo's personality calmed down a bit. Like he's still kind of like very similar to current, not current, but to like actual Bakugo. But. With, but with his friendship with Midoriya repaired and brought, brought back. He's also very, very good friends with Kirishima, Denki, and he has a whole Baku squad, but now, in addition, he's very good friends with Todoroki. So, he's a little more calm, so he's able to pass fully, so it's Todoroki. And, well, before that, we have to, like, go with Gang Orca. Midoriya's able to counter... <sighs> sorry, what's the voice changing? Spit got my throat, but, yeah. So Midoriya's able to counter a lot of the, I'd say... I'm pretty sure it was what cement they fired at them. So, or clay. So, Midori using Black Whip, Black Whip is able to slap away all of it. And, with that, Midori eventually does fight Gang Orca. This time, when Todoroki and Inisa are not, like, like, having that same problem as in canon. Because Todoroki, no matter what, is polishing, apologizing to Inisa every chance he gets, which Inisa is a little shocked about. So, Inisa is able, is able to free up Todoroki before the whole Gang Orca thing. So they were able to push him back a bit. This is when Midoriya just says, let me handle it, let me take it from here, just make sure all civilians are evacuated, because there's some still left. So they nod as Midoriya Midori, Midori and Gang Orca begin fighting, and eventually Midoriya's, Midoriya get dangerous since kicking in, in the middle of the fight, and Midoriya, Midoriya would like, just channel it, like, channel it a bit. But at one point, Midoriya, Midoriya just grabs Gang, Gang Orca and puts him in a chokehold, and he's able to check out, check out Gang Orca, which shocks no one. Midoriya, Midoriya's strength is rivaling a lot of pro heroes that are currently still active. 
plus he fought alongside All Might, which gives people gives a lot of people the impression he's on All Might's level. In reality, he's more like he's like he's on him and him and Endeavor are basically equals at this point because because one, well, Endeavor's flames could get could get the best of Midoriya. Has never did improve a bit while training with Shoto, Shoto, but and Midoriya, Midoriya also has would fight Endeavor a little nervously because pro hero. Now, uh, next, Argus Shia Hisaikai. Midori does not train with Nidai this time. He trains with Endeavor. But, he only trains with Endeavor. Bakugo also trains with Endeavor. And with this, Midoriya does end up... Well, eventually, when, like, Nidai talks about Shia Hisaikai, the person that discovers Shisaki is Mirio and Bubble Girl. And, um, when they want the, like, the choose heroes, no one is shocked when Nidai chooses Midoriya to be, to be part of it, because he's one of the... I guess not family members, but one of the stronger members of Nidai's agency as Midori considers consider himself, consider, consider himself a member there. So Midori arrives, the only person there that has a problem with it is Lockrock. Well, everyone else is the same. Everyone else is like the same people that arrived in canon. The only thing different is that Suyu was also called, not called upon, she was shooting with um, Ryukyu still. Never mind. But Ochako, she was only called there because Ryukyu wanted Ochako there. And so, so did Neijure. And uh, Utaku this time is actually training, training with Gunhead, so she learned more martial arts. Well, Kirishima kept training with Fat Gum. So, uh, yeah. But everything goes the same up until the raid. This raid starts, it's, or once they're at the gates, old big guy will still bust through. This time Midori just jumps and kicks him, like, jock kicks him right in the face using, using one for all at 20, 20%, and knocks him clean out. When Midoriya lands, as Lock Rock will throw a board under Midoriya to just for Midoriya to land on. And he and once Midoriya landed on it, because Lock, Lock, Lock Rock threw it and froze it in time for a second, and then Midoriya landed on it and then put it back up. So they they continue knocking down also remember Shia Asakai as Naito as Naito will get them into the base. And we're going to go to Kirishima, not Kirishima actually, Tamaki versus those thugs. Kirishima is able to they actually improve Tamaki's confidence by a decent amount because he's Kirishima starts talking about like him before his before UA and him when Midori when, he, when Midori showed how strong he was, and I was able to improve Tamaki's confidence quite a bit. When Tamaki so when Tamaki tells me you know, the ones like go ahead, these, go ahead, these guys will be will be dealt with quickly. Kirishima have have Tamaki for that very for your awesome, awesome tone of voice and for awesome confidence. That boosts Tamaki's confidence even a little bit more. He smiles, saying, saying, take care of Fat Gun. Now the band, not the bandit, the, it's the henchman. The one, the one with the crystal quirk begins firing them at Tamaki. As Tamaki had actually decided, decided to actually do something different. Tamaki had pulled out, or put out like, like a little pebble. And, and the sea just ate it. He had and he swallowed it whole. He was able to do it, but with that, I assume that Tamaki can just eat things and he, he gains their properties. With that, Tamaki's arm begins turning, turning, some, turning into stone, getting a little bit of stone around it, and he's turning crystal guy, guy, the guy with like the at least the pull like, thing, making pull thing towards him. Let me just Google his name. His quirk is larceny, so larceny, the guy with the larceny quirk, he can't pull anything towards him, but he can actually just, like pull a weapon toward, from one of his like from one of his knocked out friend towards Tamaki. Tamaki, basically being kind of being in stone temporarily, is able to just withstand it. At one point, he claps it, like, just like just slams both of his fists into Hugh's head, knocking him out. And he looks at Setsuno. Or, yeah, I'm pretty sure his name is, his name is Setsuno. Turning towards him, as everything else is falling towards him, he is able to dodge. Until he sees it's a gun. Tamaki will use his fingers as he turns into, turns into tentacles. Grabs a gun and is able to swing it around as fast as he can. And the other is still active. Tamaki slams the gun into his head, knocking him out immediately. And Tamaki, to make sure he stays conscious, will just axe kick him in the head. Until he's, and he's, he's going to be out for a while now. Kabe woke up, thinking, you know, his comrades will still, will still be up. But Tamaki is just there, sitting on the two of them, saying, Alright, you're next. Kabe then ran at Tamaki. Tamaki would, would, would use, like, tendrils, but he bites through, well, not tendrils, tentacles, and Kabe, but Kabe bites through them. So Tamaki, Tamaki can tell his quirk involves biting things. So Tamaki thinks his quirk might be a little too useless against this, so he might just have to, have to just go result of brawling, like, just grappling him. But Tamaki runs at him, and him and Tabe, he has to avoid Tabe's teeth. When Tabe gets close enough, Tamaki will pump him in the chin, and then punch him back to the head, punch him on the top, top of his head, which slams his both of his jaws together, and Tamaki tra chuckles as Tabe's teeth, some of his teeth just break, or shatter. And Tamaki will grab his head, kneeing him in the mouth, breaking all of his teeth, and knocking him out again. 
Tana Tanuki just binds him up with, let's say he has some rope, and he just ties him up with it. And Tanuki will bring every weapon out of the room, holding it, just putting it away, and make sure that there's no rubble that they can use. So, yeah. But he make like, he makes sure that you is double, like, like double restrained, because you is separated from them. But Tanuki just sits down, and he's kind of tired. You're just from just hand hand combat and avoiding Kabe's bite. But now Kishima versus Fat Kishima, not versus Fat Gum, Kishima and Fat Gum versus um, Rappa and Teka, Tekai. Yeah, Rappa and Tekai. Or Tengai. I forget his name, but I'm going to say Tengai. Tengai and Rappa versus Fat Gum and Kishima. But Kishima is able to go red right and breakable because he launched it a lot earlier. And when he's, doing, when he's fighting Rappa, Rappa can acknowledge Kishima's strength is like just horrifying. Eventually, Kishima is able to dodge from Rappa's punches. Then he jumps up in the air and just just basically slaps Rappa across the first, like just scratches him and makes Rappa's face bleed a bit. Some blood gets in Rappa's eye because it was above it. The like, catches on his forehead. With that, Kishima will take the advantage, kicking Rappa right in the groin. This foot, he didn't harden his foot because he has some sort of honor as a male. So he kicks Rappa in, Rappa in the groin, not hurting his feet, and he's pushed red right and breakable. And Ten Guy was about to summon the barrier, but Fat Gum was attacking him, so he couldn't just do, do anything against that. When Trapper was, was kicked in the groin, he's then need need him right, right in the face, knocking him out. Same fashion, Tamaki defeated t- defeated Tabe. And this one Ten Guy looked at Rappa, who was unconscious. Shimon then just just like kicked Rappa in the face again, using hardened using hardened foot, knocking him out. Well, it was he was still knocked out, but that wouldn't that would ensure he's down for a while, or at least get a, get a, get a concussion if you if you woke up again. Eventually, Fat Gum, Fat Gum was able to catch Tenkai off guard when he looked at Rappa and knocked him clean out. Now, Kishima just looks at his arms are pretty badly bruised. They find a medical room and they start patching up his arms. Now, um, the whole thing with League of Villains and Shia Sakai was still still the same, so we're going to go to Night Eye, Aizawa, and Lock Rock versus Clone Rappa and Toga. Aizawa needs to keep, needs, needs keep, keep up with his students, so he's a little bit stronger. And this leads to him, like, just when he fights Toga. Him and Toga are actually keeping up, keeping pace, which shocks Toga. And I was about to slash her, but she's able to block with her knife and punch Aizawa right in the throat. Aizawa coughs up blood, so about to, Toga's about to stab him. But this leads to Black Rock kicking her and clean across the face, and you're flying back. Then Clone Rappa is easily, easily, easily defeated by Nara as he throws him, like, one of those balls right through Rappa's head, or the Clone's head, which would kill it. But then the mime, or the mimic guy, I say he's defeated the same way he's in canon. I forgot, I forgot how he was defeated, but I say he's the same way he's in canon. Nero is a little bit stronger, so I'm going to fight those three guys he's, that he fought originally. The one that would shoot him with the quirk canceling bullet. Nero, the first person, like he's the first person who Miri knocks out, and he's on his face right, like right through a wall, cleaning it, like just almost killing him. Because of how hard Miro punched him. Other two, Mirio, Mirio gets the pull of Bane and just grabs one of them and knees them right in the spine, almost breaking it, but it knocks them out through just through sheer pain. Then Mirio, Mirio clearly, clearly kicks the other one across the face. Now, um, Aizawa versus Kronos. Kronos will appreciate sure his name's Kronos, but that guy, that guy will capture, um, he captures, captures, um, Aizawa. He depends on Aizawa, he threatens to kill him. That's how it chuckles as he glances right at right him like he's like, oh you know, if I see you see you even move your eye, they'll kill you. But that's how it moves his eyes so fast, like faster than a normal human good, which shocks Kronos, Kronos goes Kronos' quirk is cancelled, and his arrow will, will just go back going to being his hair. That's how a piece to hold Kronos down and beat him until he's unconscious. Like he punches him in the face until his face is covered in blood and he thinks that's enough. So yeah. That's how the stands up, tying him up. And he then checks on Mirio as Night Eye Mirio are fighting. No, 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 not Night Eye actually. Just Night Eye Mirio and Midoriya are fighting, fighting Overhaul. Midoriya had saved, had saved Airy, so when he gets her out of there, he gives her to Aizawa, and Aizawa does this. I'm, I'm, go, I'm going now. Everyone is able to escape as Kirishima runs out. And the guy that Ryukyu would originally fight it woke up a bit, so Ryukyu is able to fight him. Ochako. Chaco can beat him if she chose. Can beat him on her own if she if she got enough time. But she was able to break one of his arms, so he was able to give him pretty bad, just pretty bad bruises, which Chaco kept abusing by punching the bruises. Then Ryuki was able to use her tail and dragon form to slam him down in the ground. Now I can go back to this. So, so as gets airy, 
And Miryu, not Midori, not Miryu. Midori busts right in as a quick casting bullet is about to shoot Miryu, but Midori is able to use Black Flip and slap it away. And Midori just used Black Flip to slap it on that guy's head, knocking him out. But um, this led to overall absorbing all of the all the members of Sakai that he could see, and overall also goes in his full full form. Last time with Miryu, when Miryu, when Night about, Night about to die, Miryu will shield Night Eye, but Midori will grab, just grab that piece of rock and he just really forget I was here and crushes it. And he's like, he's strong enough to crush, crush rock with his bare hand, not even using one for all. At least snap it. But Midori then says, Alright, I'm going to go beyond, beyond my limits for a, few, for, for a few minutes. I'm going to be tensing up a lot, so Miryu, I'm counting on you. Night Eye, you, you as well. Midori roars, 50% one for all, well, one for all, 50% full cowling. And shoots towards, shoots, shoots towards, um, towards, towards overall, and his legs in the throat, in the tense up, and being bleeding a bit. Because his skin broke, broke a bit, and the muscle even tore, so, yeah. But he was able to actually just use, to use full cowling in his arms that weren't 50%, but like around 30-40%. If he thought of shockwaves that actually almost blew, blew apart over his actual arms, he was able to grab overall by the head and slam him right into the ground. And overall got back up, holding his head that's bleeding a lot. And he's quite kind dizzy, but as much overhaul Midoriya, who can't move anymore, Miria would appear, kicking not, not Nadai, kicking overall right in the kneecap, snapping it, and breaking his leg. It led to Nadai axe kicking overall in the head and knocking him out. But before he was fully unconscious, he grabbed, grabbed one of Nadai's arms, squeezing as hard as he can using overall, and poof, blood splattered everywhere. But overall fell unconscious then, and not, and not I fell to the ground, but Miri was able to keep his arm up. And Midori had like just started like, to crawl towards Night Eye. But eventually, eventually everyone like came in saying Night Eye bleeding pretty badly. And when they were able to like just kind of like just stop the blood like stop bleeding from the medics, the medics and everyone was able to stop the bleeding. And they bring Night Eye to the hospital. Midori brought to the hospital as well as his muscles did suffer, did suffer pretty bad damage because Midori just used them so fast and used a lot of power through them. So they fixed his muscles up. And then they have uh, they have just this night I patched up. But he has one arm. So this not not I doesn't have to retire, but he does he does just say, you know, in case that he might have to retire soon, he makes the name of Peter the actual actual just leader of the agency. But Night Eye is going to be his assistant and not to be ordered around like an actual assistant. Which Sen Peter agrees to. Now uh pause real quick. Okay, so that concluded the Shadow Sakai arc. It's gonna be like the um, Remember Me of course arc that didn't, that didn't happen because no one failed. So yeah, more money can't brag about it. So yeah, and a lot of a lot of Classroom B can. I lost my time. Sorry. A lot of Classroom B kind of has to view one A as their superiors because it's obvious. They have Midoriya, they have Bakugo, they have Todoroki, they have Kirishima, who actually is is actually kind of rivaling Bakugo for power. Todoroki got a lot more training with Endeavor currently, and Endeavor is using different tactics to train with Todoroki. Todoroki's okay with that. Even Natsuo is starting to come back in the family because Endeavor is trying to bond with him too. And he's been trying to do it enough to the point where Natsuo thinks it's annoying and just gives in. Same with, Fuy same with Fuyumi. Well, Fuyumi does, does, thinks, it's annoying. She thinks, thinks it's annoying. She loves it. And even Endeavor starts visiting um, Rei with, with, with Shoto, which Rei she pretty much appreciates. Natsuo and Fuyumi join in occasionally. And Natsuo is the only one that doesn't forgive Endeavor yet, besides Toya. Because Dabi is Toya. You guys haven't seen news about that all over the place for a while ago, actually. They don't know, don't know, that, don't know that by this point. You either don't care about Dabi's actual identity, or you guys just prefer to hate spoilers, even though the spoiler was very, very hard to avoid. This is before I reading the manga. Or she reading it rel rel religiously, but yeah. Now, uh, back, to, back to the whole thing. So, we start talking about, uh, not start, but we start going over, I guess it would be the pro hero thing, where the, the rankings are established. Let's say Midoriya is attending this. Because All Might has actually been going around certain agencies, giving tips on how to improve as he's been, he's been training Midoriya. Let's have a cover girl give him tips as well. Tips as well. I think I said a different word, but I hope I, hope I didn't. Well, Maya has also been like a sidekick to some heroes, like Night Eye. Well, not Night Eye, Stand Peter now. As it's only has a strong, pretty strong punch to knock out some people in one blow. He has above average strength for being so small. Well, not well, small, thin. But then we have the school, we have the school festival arc. But 
Midoriya is actually pronounced like once he's able to become a full hero, his rankings will be established right in the middle of the top 10 heroes. He might be placed as number 5 or number 6 hero once he graduates UA. Because they can, only, they can only tell him that his power will grow and grow in UA. So Midoriya is already an established spot in the number 5 or number 6 spot. Because he defeated number 10 hero, and then Ryukyu, Ryu, and Ryukyu knows Midoriya stronger than her, so he's above number 10. And then Ryukyu might be stronger than the heroes that are above her. But I'd say your power, like someone stronger than her, stops at like, like like Mirko, Hawks, Endeavor. Not All Might, because All Might's Small Might now, but yeah, so just like Mirko, Hawks, Endeavor, and, and All Might would have been the limit. But then now Midoriya would, would, would place All Might as a limit. So yeah. Like, I think Midoriya's best chance is probably, probably beating Mirko, and that's it, or at least tying with her. Because he can't beat Endeavor and can't beat Hawks. Hawks' cork is too versatile for him. And Midoriya would have to use Black Whip a lot, and Hawks' wings would still be be a, an, an advantage for him. So, so Midoriya would lose to Hawks just due to sheer, quote-unquote, numbers. While Mirko and him are pretty fast and strong, but Mirko's slightly faster. So she's able, she just has a slight advantage in speed, not strength. So then the whole festival still happens. And then we're going to go to, like, I'd say, uh, let me check again. Actually, never mind, it's joint, joint training, joint training, so... I'm going to go over, over to this page. Alright, the first battle, Tsuyasui, Koji Hoda, Nengi Kaminari, and Eijo, Eijo Kirishima, plus Hitoshi Shinso. Versus Kosei Tsubara, I don't know if pronouncing that name, Kosei, Rin, Shishida, and Shizaki. Shizaki calmed down a bit because Midoriya kind of forced her to calm down a few times. And I guess in personality why she was forced, she was forced to calm down, forced to calm down, but, yeah. Now... This time, so everyone in 1A is a lot stronger. That includes Koda. Kota. Yeah, no, Koda. So Koda is. Well, the plan's kind of still the same, but Kishima would insist that he takes down Shishida. Well, actually, no, he, he insists that he takes down. I'm pretty sure Sub, Suburaba is the guy. Like, Kosei and, Kose and Shishida might be his only problem, so he says. He says Kosei might have the one is the one with the drill quirk, and then Shisha does just big. So he insists that Asui and he insists that Asui come 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 with him, just as backup, which she agrees to. So he runs towards runs towards um towards towards Shishida. Shishida there was a team, but Shishida and and Kosei. I almost said Jose, but Shishida and Kosei. Then she should clash her a bit, as in, he then just grabs Kosei as if Kosei tries to chase Asui. Once he grabs Kosei, he sends Kosei into a wall as he's walking off Shishida's attacks. But then, so Asui would just send her tongue down on Kosei's head as hard as possible, knocking him out immediately. He should have kept like, ramping his power as much as he could, and Kishima then said, Alright, you're forcing me to do this. He then held, Ko held, held Shishida's mouth shut, and he went to the right unbreakable, as in, he just punches him in the chest repeatedly until he's unconscious, but that didn't knock out Shishida. Kosei and Shishida are out, as now it's just Rin and Ibarra. So, Ibarra is not fighting Denki, well, Denki's not fighting Ibarra, mainly. Koda will send out birds to block off Ibarra, which Denki finds an advantage, so she sends a few volts to her head, which knocks her out. And Denki, not Denki, Kishima and Asura are just sitting out now, because Koda's mainly doing the, the diversion, and Denki's doing his own thing. But now, let's start all still level, let's just Rin, and he gets outnumbered and submits. So that leaves 1A to the 1A and 1A to victory. Shinzo didn't really do too much, he was just in, like amazed. Actually, wait, no. No, because Shinzo, Shinzo does need to do something. So, so instead of Rin submitting, he has to try to rush towards all of them. What Shinzo then says, Rin. There's Rin. Well, 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 why don't you just submit? It's a question, not like, it's, like, it's not, a, not a rhetorical question anyway, but Shinzo's like, not Shin. Rin's like, I, I can't submit. Like, or in the middle of the in question, he's like, He's just went under, under brainwash. Shinzo's first, Shinzo then says, Alright then. Well, I command you to either let 1A beat the hell out of you, or submit. And Ren, using some common sense, will submit. So yeah. Now the next fight. Uh, hmm. Second battle. Ayama, Momo, not Momo. Ayama, Momo, Toru, and Tokyami versus... Which is Fukudashi, Shihai, Itsuka, Kendo, and Shinoko. I know all these people by name. Because I love, love, love them all. But, but mainly Shihai. He's my favorite. 
Tokiyami has a little bit more power, but he has the same the same move set. So um, first fight, mainly so mainly for Tokiyami. When you know, when you find out about about, um, about uh, she has quirk. He then tells Aoyama to just help him, and he tries to keep using Black Shadow, to, Black Shadow, to, or the usage of Black Shadow to a minimum. But once once he uses Black Shadow, this leads to Shiai jumping into Black Shadow, and that's when he just laughs as he just jumps back as Black Shadow will extend, and Aoyama will just use a use a blast for like three seconds, dis dispersing Black Shadow and shooting Shiai out of it. And with that, Shiai is kicked right in the sh right like right in the ankle, making him fall to the ground, and then mm, Tokiyami will stomp on his head, knocking him out. And then Fukudashi versus Momo and Toru. So once Fukudashi makes those like, giant words, Momo will use actual cannonballs to shoot the words apart, and this leads Toru to actually find a fun way to get through them. And Fukudashi does end up like seeing Toru, Toru by accident, but then Toru will throw, throw a glove at Fukudashi's face, then slaps him right in the head, which almost knocks him out. And not knocks him out, but just like knocks him to the ground because it hurt a lot. But this leads to Toru picking up something else and hitting Shishida in the head with it. One age is going to be just like hitting people in the head with things as hard as they can to knock them out. And then, then Tokiyami is still beaten up, not beaten up, but is still taken down by Kinoko. Momo is beaten by Kendo. And then Toru eventually just submits because Kendo beat the hell out of her. While well, all that's left is Aoyama versus Kinoko and Kendo. Aoyama is able to use, his, to use his blast a little bit longer for like two or like two to three seconds, but three three seconds is his limit. Four is where is where is where he may um S word himself. So yeah, so eventually Kendo will try will just like run towards Aoyama. Aoyama will use a three-second blast as Kendo tries to just like block you to her hand, but actually burns a lot more than she thought, which leads her jumping back. And when Kenoko is about to use her quirk, Aoyama will just say, Oh, I hate this. Is going to use another blast and it shoots Kenoko into a wall. Kenoko oh, is not unconscious almost, but she can't use her quirk because she's too dazed. Kendo's hand is bleeding pretty badly, which leads to Aoyama running, attacking Kendo, and she she gets she gets knocked in something that knocks her out. But then he comes he's about to bless Kenoko and she submits. Aoyama then says, Wow, Kendo's heavy. Not heavy, heavy. And that's when that's when Tokiyami cough cough saying, She's not heavy, you're just weak. Aoyama says, I am not weak. We see Tokiyami saying, You never join us for physical training, only quirk training. Otherwise, you just cry like a baby. Ayama just shush. That's how Yama just this is he's insecure because he's the physically weakest member of Class One A. Yes, he is. Mineta is even stronger than him, and Mineta is a little bit bigger now because well, Midoriya saw Mineta as like the burden of Class One A, so Midoriya made him like made him work out, work out, work out with them. So, so Mineta is a little bit more muscular and a little bit taller. He's able to, also able to deal with that. To, like no matter who took any any sorts of perverted things out of the dorms. Just for just for Mineta's sake, so Mineta isn't used to anything now. But um, yeah, he's he's a little weak, a little bit weaker to women. But now Ida, Shoji, Shoto, and Ojiro versus Tetsu, Kaibara, Yuzo, and Pony. I forgot, I forgot who, who Kaibara who Kaibara is. Let me figure it out. Okay, hold up. Okay, my bad. Talk about that. Uh, what was his name again? Okay, so I'm pretty sure Su Baraba is a guy. This guy with solid air quirk. Now we go. Now we go to third battle. It's Sen Kaibara with the gyrate quirk. I'm sorry. So Kaibara. This will give you Kirishima, who defeated, defeated the guy. The guy with solid air quirk, but he still got beat up the same way because he tried to use solid air on Kirishima to block Shishida's blows. Not well, block Kirishima from hitting from hitting Shishida, but so you still knocked him out. But yeah. Now. First fight is going to be actually actually going to be Ojiro and Shoji versus Tetsu Tetsu. So to get this battle alone, Ida and Todoroki are able to fend off most of 1B away from away from Tetsu Tetsu, which Tetsu Tetsu immediately, immediately realized was a trap. This goes to punch at the ice and Oshiro, not Oshiro, Ojiro, at least the Shoji using using three hands or three fists basically punched Tetsu Tetsu into the air, and Ojiro smacks him back down. And Tetsu Tetsu is then like, basically just like. like he just basically just beat the hell out of a Shoji and Ojiro, and his steel's eventually being a crack. But he does realize that Ojiro and Shoji are getting tired and they're they're in pain. Shoji's fingers are almost breaking because he's punching solid steel, and Ojiro's tail is very beaten up. So this is runs at them, and then Shoji says, "All right, all right, Ojiro, you ready?" Ojiro jumps in the air off Shoji's back, 
Before he jumps back and jumps in the air, kicking over a gigantic steel, not steel, but gigantic, this a water tower. He thought he stopped it down using his tail. As when they punch Ted Ted's into a building, and buildings, into buildings, it made the punch him, punch him into that building to make it tilt over, or at least weaken, weaken, weaken the, truck, the structure. So Ochoa stopped it over, it fell right on Tetsu, Tetsu, being too heavy for him to lift up. So, yeah. But, the only, only way for, for Tetsu, Tetsu to live by, to live or escape from it by not suffocating, or well, only way for, to get out of it without suffocating, is that he says, I submit. Or, if he will basically say, you know, the only way for you for, to get out of this, what will say? Tetsu, 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 if you want out, you have to submit. Tetsu, 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 Tetsu refuses it until he's about to suffocate. He feels it. Tetsu Tetsu. I'm saying it too fast, I know that, I'm sorry, but Tetsu Tetsu does not just say, I won't submit. And he feels like he's about to suffocate. And then he says, I submit. Choji will lift it up a bit, and he then drops on the ground once Tetsu Tetsu, escape, once Tetsu Tetsu gets out. But he has to walk over walk over to the prison cell and stay there. But now, Ida and Todoroki versus, versus Kaibara, Juzo, and Pony. I see Pony about to stab Ida right in the head by accident, but it's only threat to threaten him. But suddenly the horn stops midair, as Pony's head was landed in the ground by Shoji. Shoji's, Shoji's holding her ground, not her ground. She's holding her. He's holding her down. As she tries to use her horns, but she can't see where Shoji is. She can't tell where his hand is. She can just tell he's. Oh, he's. His hand's on my head. I can't. Figure, I can't figure out the direction. She fires horns rapidly, but the horns are so close to Shoji that he just catches them in midair and drop and just stab them in the ground. One point he kills one of the horns to hunt the Pony's head, saying, "All right, you're done." And everyone, everyone can tell this is a, this is just like like a threatening tactic, as some heroes do do the same thing. Like, like there's an, on the news the other day, there's a hero that had the thing to drop a guy off a building. So these tactics are very common among some heroes. Not common; they're a little uncommon, but they're they're used occasionally. Even Endeavor uses them. So this tactic is like they warn him that you know if he does go goes, does go too far with the tactics, they may they may disqualify him and his team. But because you know, he's not going too far, they'll allow they'll allow him. Pony not wanting to be stabbed because she doesn't like Shoji might do it because the way he's, he's saying it. She feels like, she's like, alright, I submit. Jujuzo and Kaibara are like, no, Pony! Then Ojiro punches like, like hit Kaibara and back the head, but Kaibara will catch the tail, he's going to gyrate as much as he can, and even cuts up his, cuts up Ojiro's tail, and Ojiro then yells, I submit, because Kaibara would not let go. Ojiro falls to the ground holding his bloody tail, he wraps his B around it, running out, running into the prison cell, making sure the bleeding stops. But with that, this leads Juzo to actually sinking Shoji in the ground, and then he kicks kick, kick Shoji in the head, knocking him out. Then they pull, then they pull Shoji out of the gun, bring him in prison cell. Ojo's bleeding and stops, so you just make sure Shoji, Shoji's okay. But now it's Tenya, Ida, and Todoroki versus Kaibara and Juzo. As an Ida would laugh, saying, Kaibara, you're no lose. Kaibara then realizes that Ida is basically his only opponent that he can't beat because Ida's wearing steel armor. Either she destroys him using, using a burst full speed, and when Kaibara tries to, sky, tries to gyrate, his hand is immediately broken by, Sho, by Sho, not Shoji, by Ida's sheer force, which knocks his, which breaks his hand and flings him into a wall. Then Ida was punching him in the gut, and he throws up, and Ida then says he'll do it again if he doesn't submit. Kaibara says no, as Ida, Ida does it again, but twice. He brings him that twice, making, you know, making Kaibara throw up even more, and he says I submit. And when B immediately lays that like, class 1A, yes, they're strong. But they're more brutal than any other than any other class. Midori is like more the more soft-hearted one besides Todoroki. Like, well, actually, some well, Chaco, Chaco, Midoriya, and and Todoroki are the one who's like going like easygoing ones. Well, that's when they like you have to understand that we're heroes. But a lot, like a lot of people don't get don't, not a lot of people a lot of villains won't get the, won't get it if we if we're, if we're kind to them, and some opponents won't even either. So we need to make sure that they know we hit, that they, we will destroy them if they, if they try to. Try to, try to come at us again. So Ida only, actually only would have only punched punched him around three, three, four times, but Ida, Ida just did three. If he was if he had to punch again, he might even hesitate and just say and just say I submit instead. So yeah. Like they have a limit to what they'll do. Joji's the one with like basically no limits because he knows he won't do it. Or and everyone else knows that too, if, if you know him personally. A lot of one be even know Shoji might not might not even want to threaten want, might not th- want to threaten Pony. But, um, Saibara, not Saibara, Kaibara submits, and now it's announced Juzo versus Todoroki and Ida. But Ida sunk in the ground, and before he escapes, he almost breaks his leg because he didn't realize he was sinking. So with that, his leg hurts a lot, but it's not broken. So he just submits because his leg's in too much pain. Which leads to one, like, which is a 1v1 now. 
So, yeah. So, uh, Todoroki versus Juzo. When Juzo tries to sink Todoroki, Todoroki just fires himself in the air using fire. And once he's about to hit the ground, he then just says, hmm, this should work. And I'm just going to move from one piece. Todoroki, hand, so his hand hits the ground and then yells, Ice Age. He then freezes the whole area and Juzo's body is frozen. Well, freezes the whole area around, Ju around Juzo. So just threw the whole area in front of him and he froze Juzo completely. But once once Todoroki is on the winner, he then, he then releases Juzo and even puts the things around him so he doesn't get, so his hypothermia just doesn't set in immediately. So Juzo immediately cools down, thanking him, and yeah. Third, third battle submits with, well not submits, it completes with 1A being the victor. They've won, they're, they're, they're 3 for 3 at this point. Now, Jiro, Bakugo, Saro, and Sato versus, versus Bondo, or Bondo, let me figure out his name real quick. Okay, so, Kojiro is the guy with like the, 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 glue, the glue dispenser for a quirk. So, Bakugo, by the way, they all have the winner costumes. Costumes, but, um, yeah. And everyone does know Bakugo's here, name is Dynamite now, so, yeah. So, this time, when the fight starts, Bakugo is thinking on his feet, as he wants to be so much Midoriya in terms, of the, in terms of that good but fast thinking. And he tells Jiro that his, uh, well, not Jiro, he tells that, he tells Seiro and Sato that they should handle Bondo, as this, they, might be, they might be their biggest, their biggest opponent. Then says that I would say it's gonna be left in the hands of Jiro as he might be harder or she might he might be, hard, be the easiest to beat. Then says that he'll handle Tokage and Kamikiri. They ask if they're sure, but they they say yeah. Well, he says yeah. So Jiro and Saro head towards head towards Bondo or Bondo. Well, honestly, Kojiro. So Jiro and Saro head towards Kojiro, and no, Saro and Sato head sort of head towards Kojiro, and. Um, Sarah is able to just use tape as a distraction by like, taping towards his face when he dodges. Sato is able to run around, run around the whole glue or clay dispensing thing. He's able to just hit him in the face, not even using his quirk. But when, but when Kojiro starts, just starts like going, just kind of rampaging now. No, 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 Kojiro. Sato has to start using his quirk, and he starts restraining, restraining Kojiro. And Sarah tapes him up to so set up his head first, and then when Sato lets go. This leads to Sarah taking the rest of Kojiro, which leads to Sato, not Sato, Kojiro being being just eliminated. He's put in the prison cell once his mouth and head are able to be to, are uncovered. And then Awase versus Jiro. Jiro's earlobes are actually stabbing at him too fast for him to like should like, like tape like weld them or something. Eventually he puts them in front of Jiro to the point where like not what the point, but like once they're stabbed through the um once they stab into the steel. I'll say is about to weld to weld them. But then Jiro starts spinning her earlobes as best she could, which pulls him out. And once they're pulled out, she stabs him into her boots before she jumps in the air and about to kick, kicks Awase in the chest. But her earlobes plug, plug it into her shoes as she kicks him, which lets her, her protect, her, her, protect her heartbeat, I think. Once that's protected, she shoots Awase back into a wall and knocks him out. So yeah. Now Jiro, because she's not physically strong, Midori has class when they train with him sometimes. Not train with him, but when they train together. Is he thinks it's best for Jiro, Jiro, Jiro to work on speed? She has average strength, which isn't too good because a lot, of, like a, a lot of other students have, have be above, be above average strength. But she works on speed. But yeah, she's able to knock out, to knock out. I would say by tricking him. Saro and Sato exhausted. Well, Sato uses quirk, and Saro was just using his quirk too much to the point where his elbows hurt. So yeah, and then. Jiro's a little tired because she moved all around a lot, plus her earlobes hurt a bit. So it's just Bakugo versus two, versus two people now, which he, which he insisted on. Now, eventually he's able to avoid a lot of a lot of a lot of um, the attacks from Kamakiri and Tokage. But once he once he figured out Tokage, Tokage's quirk, he then is able to round up Tokage in a certain place, and then she realizes that his gauntlet is missing. As the explosion set off. Which flings Tokage to her actual body and knocking her well, makes her body go to go go together and it knocks her out just through sheer pain. But Togaru, who, well, Kamikiri versus Bakugo now. As soon as, as soon as Kamikiri gets close enough, Bakugo would grab his blades and just start like just dodging most of the attacks. And Kamikiri then noticed that Bakugo doesn't think it doesn't seem as a threat, which makes him even more mad. But Bakugo is able to defend off all the blades using his, using his gauntlet. 
and then eventually you just grabs Kamikiri and headbutts him, knocking him out. And everyone's just shocked that Kamikiri, who flaunts about being so thinks he flaunts that he's so strong, was defeated by someone who didn't even take him seriously. So yeah. So one A, four for four. But the the fourth battle and the, I believe the second or third battle is yeah, second battle. So the fourth battle and second battle, those are those are the most intense. But you know, well, actually, actually two through four were the most intense. So three was also pretty intense too, I'd say. But now fifth battle, Midori, Achako, Mina, and Neta versus versus Reiko, Shota, Yui, and and Monoma plus his Toshi Shinso. Uh, any of the battles? I don't think so. Okay. Okay, I just remember, just remember it showed us quirk. I forgot that it was like the things can just fling in between into each other. I forgot the name, but yeah. Each time things fling at each other. But um, this time, the strategy is mainly he tells, well, Midori will pair himself up, up with Mineta, and he tells Mineta that He'll, that those two will be facing it off against Shinso and Shota. And that Ochako and Mina should be fighting should be fighting Yui and and um and and Reiko. He said that he just told Mina that Reiko would be a good opponent and that Ochako's good opponent would be would be Yui. But the two most likely will be teaming up. Now, but the match starts as Midori will run towards Shinso with uh, with with like he has so Midori's wearing the jacket, because he usually doesn't, that's when he doesn't know he changed his costume. But he also, it's also winter, so the jacket is good for him. So it's not, it's not kind of cheating, he's going to use it as a tactic, too. So, so Neta is hiding under the, under the cloak, using his balls to stick to, stick to Midoriya. Or hang on to Midoriya. But now, once they get close enough to, um, so I get to, to, to Monoma. Uh, well, Midori doesn't know about Shinso, but he's probably just going to fight Shota. Shota and Monoma and Shinso. Shinso does try to brainwash Midoriya, but then when Shinso lets like just turn the knob on his on his um on his mask to make it sound like Ochako, suddenly a purple ball comes flying from somewhere and makes, makes Shinso's hand stick to his mask, and Shinso can't pull it off. He tries to use his other hand to pull it off, and his other hand gets stuck. He sees Monoma looking for Mineta, but everyone that's looking from the outside can see Mineta's under Midoriya's jacket. Eventually, when Monoma does notice this, when Midori he sends a black whip to fling at to he flung at, at Monoma and starts slapping the buildings, which makes Cinder Rebel fall towards him. And Midori can't really train um, his danger sense properly, so Odin doesn't have a proper way to do it besides having people attack him, which isn't going to work because he's already faster and stronger than, than most people. So it's not, not going to do, do any difference so far. So his, his danger sense isn't really going to be too active. Um, pause real quick. Alright, so. So by the time Munma had noticed Mineta under Midoriya's jacket, Midoriya caught him off guard using Black Whip to smack around buildings and make Rebel Rebe fall towards him. Munma began using um, Shota and Reiko's quirks to just avoid the Rebel. And Midoriya didn't know didn't know Shota's quirk because he wasn't, he wasn't around Shota the whole time. Shota failed the race, so the Switch Festival, so he couldn't see Shota's quirk at all. He saw it once and then forgot, 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 forgot what it was eventually after. Eventually forgot what it was after. But... Once he, once he knew, knew the quirk showed us, he found some way to make Monoma use the quirk, uh, found, me, found, way, found some way for Monoma to use the quirk against him. So, once he showed his quirk, once Monoma used Shota's quirk to fling something at Midoriya, Midoriya had grabbed both pieces of the objects, and Midoriya flung it at Monoma, using Black Whip a bit to, to have the same effect, which made a piece of rubble well, fly right at, at Monoma's head and use Reiko's quirk to control it. But then, a giant object falls right towards Monoma. And above that object is Ochako. Ochako had defeated Yui and used the giant object she made to fall towards Monoma. So Monoma used, so Monoma had used Reiko's quirk, but when he tried to avoid that object, Meta had stuck his stuck like his foot to the ground. So when Monoma tried to run away, it wasn't doing doing too well. It led to Midori who's just like shoulder blocking, her blocking right into um, right into Monoma, and then Mo Monoma was knocked to the ground, and then Midori just punched him right in the head. Well, in the tree as hard as you can, knocking him out. Now, what's left is, man, is not Neta, is Ashido versus, no, not, oh, there's Mubla Shota left, but he's hiding currently, just to find some way to beat Midoriya. Soriko versus, versus Ashido. 
No, this way is more Asha's favor. She's just like, like walking right towards, right towards, right, 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 like right towards Reiko, like, like nothing's going on. And Reiko will will make something just appear, not appear, but shoot towards, shoot towards um, Mina, which Mina just melts. And when she gets close enough, Reiko is kind of shaking, and she says, "says Please don't hit me," and I submit. I should have laughed, saying, "I was no, it's not going to hit you. I should probably, probably just probably just probably just scare you with acid, and that should have worked." So I was walking away, thinking because they heard about Shota, and then two really, two really ridiculously uh, uh, large, two ridiculously large object, objects fly at them. Objects will hit Mina and um, Oshako, knocking them out, and will scratch will scratch Mineta on the side, which can hurt them a bit. And it did scratch, it did scratch, scratch, scratch Midoriya on the back by by default. But but Mineta jumped down, putting some blood on the side, and says, "Damn it, it's not a deep cut, but it hurts." This Mineta says, "No, no." This Midoriya says, "Just take take these. We'll take your." Um, take the purple things off my back. So, this is when, this is when uh, just takes them off, saying, "Well, well, what do you want me to do?" Yeah. Middle, middle, middle chuckle, saying, "Well, Shinzo is still in the game, but he's trying to he's just stuck together. So, I want you to go to go beat up Shinzo." And this middle thing, saying, "Hit him in the nuts is the easiest way to do it, because Shinzo is busy and can barely even see." Middle just middle just laughs, saying, "What about the other guy?" This Midori says, eh, that's my thing. So, so Midori begins walking towards, towards Shota, and Shota can you tell that Midori is kind of mad. So Midori says, first scratch my hero costume and my jacket. And you can get the nerf to knock out two of my teammates. I'm pretty pissed off. Shota will try to, will try to use those same large, large objects in his Midoriya, but Midori will use one for all, 20%, catching them both, and start, crush, start crushing them. And when we start crushing them, they eventually shatter because, well, not shatter, they get dented or just broken because it's metal. And throws him back at Shota at double the speed. He shot them at Midoriya. Shota had to, had to dodge a bit. Well, Shota had to dodge about any other way. When he dodged, Midoriya was right behind him because he's one for all to the him into speed. And just elbowed Shota in the back of the head, which knocked him out. So, he won. But now it's left at Shinzo. And we have Midoriya in front of Shinzo. Shota, Shinzo barely saw him. But then, then I just upcut Shinto right in the groin, and Shinto falls to the ground, and, and just wo- a very, very muffled, muffled, muffled voice from Shinto says, I submit. That results in the winner being Mineta. But this video is going on two hours, so I'm in the, I'm, I'm in this part here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like, subscribe, comment for another part. Bye.